Are we live? Oh my god. <laughs> Hello. I haven't even told my sister. <laughs> we could just duke it out now and forget it ever happened. Foy. I'm going to drop my weapons and I'm going to pull the body out. You pull him out. Uh, you were actually one of the first people to tell me about this place. I don't believe so, no. Drunk hollow, drunk hollow, whiskey in the air. Drunk hollow, drunk hollow, even climbing all my sails. Right there in the thoroughfare, our lovers kissing sweet. <laughs> Are we live? Oh my god. Yes. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. I was saying one, two, three over and over as she was trying to say three, two, one, and yeah. I am a freaking idiot. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Tabletop Notch. Uh, we have Erica with us again this Yay. week. Yay. Yeah, I survived. <laughs> so so did my grandma. Yeah, grandma. Yeah. Truly really the cutest thing I've ever seen. That was Truly. really cute. Uh, it was her idea. Just, uh, <laughs> the videos were great, super cool. Um, tonight, we're coming at you with chapter 10 of Brunkalo. We've reached double digits here. Um, and we're gonna be coming back. Uh, the group has returned to town after both a mission for the Monteros and uh, after rescuing Nal Morton, who uh, has some dinner plans with Doxley and Alien. Uh, Your boy. Uh, our, You're his boy. Someone's boyfriend. <laughs> That's weird. It's our boy. <laughs> oh, don't say it like that. Yeah. A lot of great stuff coming. Um, because Kate was technically uh, present, um, but uh, Erica was not, uh, we will talk about a couple things uh, once we come back from the intro that um, some questions that Kate had for Niall that the group would have been present for. So everyone would have heard those. Uh, we'll Do get, we get into to respond. <laughs> It oh what, as we might have, <laughs> no, like just calling. Have to, you just have to suffer in silence. Like calling other people rude or something, maybe. Yeah, you can call them rude. <laughs> you want to so, do? Niall, why do you find Ilian insufferable? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Who's your least favorite Tyrone, and why is it Ilian? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Um, but before we dive into the meat of everything, a uh, little, little round the horn. Sure. <gasps> Thanks for joining us God. here on Twitch. Uh, there's uh, other ways to watch and listen, including podcasts, which go live on Tuesday. The YouTube video goes live on Tuesday, but only if you are a YouTube member or a Patreon subscriber. We got 42 YouTube we members! Hit oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank so you. So YouTube doesn't deliver. We can see make that. us super duper Legally. rich. I have the terms and conditions. Nice. Yeah, you do. Hell yeah. So thank. Well. All of them. Thank, thank you. That guy. That helped thank, that thank happen. They, well, now we have like new emotes too. It unlocked it because uh, when we first started, we only had a couple people, so I can only do like two emotes. Mm -hmm. Now we've got like 11 emotes oh. if you're a YouTube member that you can like put in the comments of a video. Which That's is really like cool. two per us. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so yeah. true. Come on, Matt. Come That's on, Matt. Two per. Yes. That, yeah. that puts it's it in It's two per unskippable ad <laughs> I wasn't that plays. Yeah. 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 Until you said that. So all those lovely people get to watch the YouTube video before everyone else, mm -hmm. uh, other than Patreon subscribers, on Tuesdays. They also get the Notch and Sodas that we do like, mm -hmm. every uh, month or so. Yeah, so um, one more Notch and Soda before uh, a Christmas break. Or the Krimps yeah. break. The Krimps mm -hmm. break. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, 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 both of those happen on Tuesday. Except for on the wider world gets the YouTube video on Fridays. Those Great. go live then. Um, sparsed in betwixt there, there are many a social media platform that you will find little clips yes. and our intermission puzzles on and ridiculous polls that somehow always oh, end man. up skewed. I don't know. Somehow. This one seemed pretty accurate. I don't know, man. I, Which was the most recent one? Who shouldn't speak know. for the group? Ridiculous! <laughs> it's it's. It, there are people literally Skate. commenting that they have other thoughts, but they feel compelled to fuck with me, <laughs> even when they think it's somebody else. I saw, I saw it. This yeah. is why TC doesn't like calling votes. Yes, yeah. they always yeah. vote. They it. always. <laughs> come. So uh, I know. Well, yeah. to rooted. Nip it in the bud. Somehow we would have all voted instead of killing the goblin to just kill TC. TC was left. Who dies? <laughs> goblin. TC. 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 What? <laughs> Anyway, join us on all those social medias to find out all the ridiculous polls. Um, rate us on podcasts, like us, us, and and comment on the other comment. platforms, and follow us at Tabletop Notch for all the other stuff. Also, in between shows, uh, join us on Discord to talk oh about my the shows. Gosh, my favorite place. Um, That's where the good stuff happens. One of the best things at the end of the night, uh, uh, at, at the end of this episode, there will be a newest episode discussion. Mm. 
right. Thread, that is a great place to talk about what just happened. Uh, but there's other great uh, channels like fan art and homebrew stuff, your homebrew stuff, Matt's homebrew stuff. The Discord stuff just yeah. getting better and better. I oh mean, my the, gosh. The, the, a lot of conversation, a lot of theories that, that Deirdre yeah. loves. Yeah. Do love she loves them all theory. equally. They're like your children. I love <laughs> all of them. I couldn't possibly choose a favorite theory, by the way. People are going deep. They really like are. It. It's, cr- so, it's deep. So, so deep. Yeah. So, join us there, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, I see people in the chat noticing our new merchandise. Uh, this was what we've been wearing. Yeah. Oko Doko designed it, and we put it on a, a little cute. beanie. There's a couple other things that we're working on, but this was the one that was first ready to go. So, so that's Olive, the baby owlbear, and this oh. is a Bean on the beanies. Did you want me to put it on the camera? Oh. On the what? Uh, like a closer up so it can be seen. Stick yeah. your face under the camera. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> we're not going to do that. Okay we're going gonna to spare the, the transition. The tra- oh, uh, do I need to let's change. find out. And my, yes. We're going to hold my hair so that it's not ruined. <laughs> um, so yeah, go ahead and, and check it out. Um, Ooh, everybody detail. can really like the Samson and Samson stuff. It's so cute. It's yeah. so it's, cute. And it's like embroidered and, and, and yeah. it's got texture and, and beauty. Yeah, it's not even screen and printed. Colors. It's embroidered. It's nice. Wait, do it one more time. It was TikTok. Oh, sorry. That's okay. It's like kind of yeah. golden. It got it yeah, has a glow gold. to it. Yeah, it's very it has a little gold to it. It's really well nice. done. Um, yeah, Pogodoko did an amazing job. He I don't did. know what I would do without them. And um, so yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also shit. Patreon. We still owe you guys something for November, but what we've done so far, you can get all of our homebrew stuff for the last like 16 months, I think now we're at, which is bonkers. Dang. Wow. Um, that is a good yeah. deal. Six bucks, you get 16 months history of fucking homebrew PDFs, oh. hundreds of pages, Sweet. honestly. Sweet. Um, so go check it out. Um, I think that's it. I wanted to thank the the, the, the YouTube people. Oh, the the, uh, the the Wikipedia builders are still oh my gosh, yeah, and killing it. So thank you Going again, crazy. you guys. Um, um, and yeah, mods, Poco and Dude always always in the Discord answering people's questions, yes. timestamping the videos, doing awesome, awesome work for us. God, I know the uh, the Wikipedia has become part of our weekly uh, bit of business. I send all the pro- proper yeah. nouns that you've heard throughout the throughout the last episode. Yeah, I usually double check my notes in the wiki. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Seriously. Nope. So if you put something there that is wrong, uh, yeah. I'm probably gonna be like yeah. totally it's misleading. It's canon, baby. <laughs> Way this campaign. <laughs> More to call Kate oh, no. Rude on the street, not yeah. in front of the Montana. Okay, let's just have that clarified. <laughs> I don't know. I might have to sign in as a editor. <laughs> and TC somehow got three thousand gold pieces. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. um, and then I guess one of the last things that we should mention is so next week is uh, going to be a dark week for us. We're taking mm-hmm. next weekend off for Thanksgiving so people can visit friends and family. Have a wonderful holiday. Have a wonderful holiday. We'll say that Celebrating again. that. Um, and we'll be back on I take it back. <laughs> the following Sunday with chapter 11. And then obviously Christmas will have another little break there, but we'll get to that later. We will keep you abreast of all Jeez. the off weeks. Um, but I think that's all that I needed to mention aside from thanking some Great, people. please do, please thank away. Okay, here we go, <laughs> give me one second. Thank you all so very much. I love Three, hearing the names. Two, one. As soon as I get there, I will give you those. Yeah. Golden Dagger 94 resubscribed. The Cage King resubscribed. Wretched Troglodyte Man resubscribed. Golden Dagger did 1,050 bits. That random Twitch guy did 1,100 bits. Uh, that random Twitch guy, the one who won our Powerball last week. Oh, yeah. Beyond the sounding. Uh, Rudy Grayling resubscribed. Ali Slater did 100 bits. Mr. Richard Clockno resubscribed. Alpha R79 gave out two community subs. Thank you. Mr. Jingleheimer resubscribed. Jingleheimer did 1,000 bits. Jay Brownie did 1,000 bits. Ali Slater did 15 bits. Resident gave five community subs. Mr. Mr. Jingleheimer, 1,000 bits. Gamers Together, oh, that's a cute name. Uh, resubscribed. <laughs> Brunzy997 resubscribed. Bojo Man uh, resubscribed. And then Seth1690 resubscribed with Prime. Did you know that you can subscribe Ooh, for free wow. with Prime? It's fun and, it's and easy and free. It's, it's okay. definitely fun easy and free. It's Ooh, it's so thank you all very, very much for your support. Very, very much appreciated. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so thank I usually you. have thank one of these ready to go. And cheers. And cheers. 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 Also, Golden Dagger, was it? Say so it was their birthday or something. Oh, oh yes! Happy birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Very exciting. We'll bring you some drama. Yeah. Yes. Some hot drama. I'm going. To, I'm just gonna have a nap, sleepy time. <laughs> <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. You mean dig a grave? Nobody fought. Before we watch three hours of TC napping, yes. We were going to throw it over to the recap, and then we'll get the intro. We'll recap a little bit about what uh, Kate talked to Niall about, and then we'll dive in. Everybody ready? Let's do oh it. my yeah. gosh, so I need to pay attention to this one. It was not important. All right, everybody. <laughs> what? Here comes the recap. Here we go. You are ready.
Mm. Previously on Chapter 9, Laugh Infection. The goblins wouldn't give up their stronghold without a fight, and despite their mostly frail physique, there were a select few afflicted with nilbogism that were significantly more difficult to pin down. The most grotesque specimen had retreated to the basement, where even though the Monteros had warned against trespassing, TC and Kate couldn't help but take a closer look. The cellar had plenty of religious trinkets and baubles, but no sign of Nile, so the party set the structure ablaze and questioned the last remaining goblin until they figured out their fellow scout had been tied up back by the lake. Mr. Morton was more than grateful for the rescue and made plans to have dinner with Doxley and Ilian once he'd washed and licked his wounds. The others went about their own business, which included reward collection and a trip to Maeve's, who was looking a bit worse for wear herself. What plans were Niall and Doxley cooking up on the side, and were those farts the sound of a rift forming between TC and Kate? Stick around and find out on Chapter 10 of Bronkhol. Before we dive back into uh, where people are headed in and about town, as Kate w uh, was joining the party on their walk back, having rescued Nile from Heron Lake, she had a couple questions. One of them was about the growing tensions between the sort of original residents of Brunk Hollow and some of the newcomers, and sort of asking if it feels like things have changed since the beginning. Because Nile's been around for a decently long time, mm. not since the very, very beginning, but pretty close. He agrees that the atmosphere has shifted somewhat since the early days. The first people to come here and put up homes had a very shared sentiment of like, fuck the gods, getting free of the gods, but also of tremendous relief. Like for the first time in years or decades, they could finally kind of breathe easy here in Broncolo. Even for the people who didn't particularly like each other very much, there was a sense of having each other's backs in the early days because the choices were basically either get along with the few people that are out here and survive or go back to where the gods might be watching, which for some people felt like not an option at all. So there even is among some of the old guard who they butt heads sometimes, they you know clash over land or whatever. There is still a sense that like the people who were there first are part of this kind of exclusive club that they all kind of at least trust each other not to not to do something stupid. Another thing um, is that when new people come to town now, there is a lot of effort on the part of the old guard to suss out intentions and loyalties, which you guys have seen in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. While the opportunists are welcome in Broncolo, like people who are coming here literally just to make money or, or establish a business where they otherwise couldn't, they do like to know maybe who they could count on if a greater conflict arose. Like if there was ever a big clash between the clinkers and the citizens of Brunk Hollow, they like to know who would maybe side with the people who are anti-theist versus theist. So it's another thing he mentions. Another question um, that Kate had was whether there had ever been a time where there were some tensions at risk of boiling over, whether it was between anti-god and pro-god sentiment between the clinkers and otherwise. And what Niall says is that there were some moments of tension, but that nothing was at risk of boiling over until very, very recently. <laughs> and he doesn't go into too much detail, but he says that something happened that made people doubt whether or not Broncolo is a blind spot after all. And you, he does not say this outright, but you get a little bit of the sense that the, this may have had something to do with the meeting that happened. Yeah. Damn. The <laughs> meeting. We got here with the capital M. M. I mean, the meeting was happening when we were here. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. 
He mentions that though the population is more mixed than it once was, and mixed meaning like people now coming here who aren't necessarily anti-gods or some people coming here purely for sort of economic reasons. He does believe that the anti-theists outnumber the faithful still by a pretty big margin. Like there are people here and it's slowly becoming a little more of a mix, but still a pretty big, you know, scale tipped in the favor of the anti-theists. And that there's a, some rumblings now of people who maybe want to play it safe. And by play it safe, they mean Maybe we build a church just so people can worship just in case, you know, little things like that, that some of the old guard is very much pushing against, but some of the new people that have come to town have said, well, you know, what could it hurt, right? It's like, mm. if the gods aren't watching, <laughs> what could it hurt to uh, play it mm. safe? Didn't, and the Monteros said something like, a structure like that wouldn't last so long last week, right? Like, yeah. like that. They did indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. You yes. gave it a little more stink than <laughs> <they did. laughs> yeah. 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 Not even going to um, so yeah, so there definitely is some of the new, newer people that have come to town. Hmm. Uh, some people have said, have pushed forth an agenda of at least sort of sprinkling in some prayer and, and shows of faith so that if the day ever comes, God, God's forbid, that, uh, that some people would be, feel like they were uh, covered in a way, sort of covering their ass. One last question that Kate had was, has anything changed with the cusp since Nile first arrived? Wow. Okay. Nile declines to weigh in on whether he thinks sort of, he doesn't know whether any kind of open worship might invite the gods into Brunk Hollow, which is a worry that some people have had that like, oh, if we erect a church or if we, if there's too many people here devout and praying that that might somehow crack the door open. Nobody has any concrete b reason to believe that that might happen or that that's true. But again, rumblings of that sentiment have come up. It's a theory. It is indeed a theory. We don't love that theory. <laughs> when it comes to the cusp, he doesn't think that much has changed other than the fact that people are getting a slightly better understanding of where it is. Now that so many wagons have come to and from Brunk Hollow, they've been able to sort of loosely chart where it begins and ends because, you know, a cleric might chase you up until that point or, you know, some various other reasons why they might suspect that's where it is. So a better understanding of where the cusp is. Um, after that sort of question and, and answer from Nile, I would like Kate to roll an inside check. Mm. Oh, oh dang. Okay, come on, Steven's dice. <laughs> oh, no. Dice. Me, 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 me. 13. 13. Nothing going there. <gasps> Stony faced it was a little whole elf. Bunch of horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> Having heard some of that, and you guys were present for this, is there any sort of quick follow ups to that without getting. It wasn't a long walk back into town, but is there any clarifications that anyone wants on that? Yes. yes. Is there any indication that practicing magic may also invite the gods into Brunk Hollow. There are definitely people that worry that that's the case. Brunk, uh, magic still has a little bit of a, a stink on it mm. in, in Brunk Hollow for mainly that reason. Like on the, in, in the outside world, outside of Brunk Hollow, there is no more surefire way to get the attention of the clerics than practicing magic. So even for all the people who pretty firmly believe that Brunk Hollow is a blind spot, even they sometimes are worried that too much use of magic is gonna is gonna let somebody in. Yeah. The, again, no concrete evidence that that's the case, totally. but definitely some people worry about that. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, for the most part, to his knowledge, uh, magic has been pretty limited to. Some people are tinkering with making some magic items. There's alchemists like Maeve who now are dabbling in potions that on the outside might have been considered illegal potions or things more powerful than your average kind of healing potion or whatever. Um, but that to his knowledge, there isn't some like practicing wizard in town who's like shooting <laughs> off spells and being like, yeehaw! <laughs> so to his knowledge that- He could just figure just super kazee. <laughs> he doesn't know that that exists. Yeah. Anything else? Uh. Uh, mm. Yeah, Th this is making me. Th I may, might not have brought this up at the time, but this is making me think of a question I don't think we've asked. Since I especially was on the cart, looking back and seeing when that cleric had his, yeah, would I be able to go back out there and, with a pretty reasonable twenty thirty yard range, be like, this is right where it went out? Um. It was in a pretty open field. Okay. Um, I would say 
a loose idea, sure. Uh, like really specifically, okay. I mean, you, you'd have to try and sleuth that out. Okay. You might look for clues like when the uh, kind of horse tracks and wagon wheels were a little more sort of entrenched in the ground because as it was moving quickly, it was kind of going over bumps and yeah. making. So you might be able to tell like where the wagons, especially where they started to slow down once the fire, once the flame kind of wear, wore out. Yeah. You might be able to sl sleuth that, but it wouldn't, you'd still be guessing like, oh, yeah. maybe <laughs> from there to there, like, 300, 400 feet somewhere in this area. All right, uh, do we know that, is Niall one of the cusp mm -hmm. fingerers? He is, yeah. no. He is. All right, then I will. Cusp investigator. No. She smells. No. Then, I, then I will bring up. Um, if you call him a cusp finger, he doesn't respond. <laughs> 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 then I'll, <laughs> sir, I've done some, I won't say. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh my god. Then I will bring up, uh, you know, sir, how, how, how special would the information be if I could perhaps be able to yield a 40 to 50 yard? If you posit that to yes. him, I would say he responds kind of asking loosely what route you think you took with Baker Mackland. And given the frequency with, with, with which that route is used, mm -hmm. he thinks he already has a very good idea of where the cusp is in that particular area. All right. The most traveled routes are the places where it's the easiest yeah. to sure. guess at where the cusp is. Mm. Damn it. <laughs> Thought I had the inside scoop. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. All right. Okay. All right. Well, Let's mm. turn it over back yeah. That's a good question to Brunk Collins. Yes. I had a lot of time to think about it. <laughs> you did. You did. All right. Without the discoloration on her face. Oh, yes! You wouldn't know that Maeve had been in any kind of accident. Her usual dour disposition is still there with no indication that she's in pain or suffering from any maladies. She isn't sort of gingerly touching it or wincing at all. As you get a better look, you can see a bit of tacky translucent texture spread over her okay. skin, some kind of balm or ointment to mitigate swelling or protect against infection. So that clues you into the fact that it doesn't seem like it just happened a few seconds ago. Like she had time to get outside and apply something to her face. A quick glance over at the partially open side window that normally you would see the smoke coming out of next to the water wheel and you pick up on some dissipating wisps of smoke or vapors. The workshop being aired out, perhaps, after something alchemical went awry, whether it was a fire or just some kind of mixture, some explosion or something. Mm. Before she speaks, Maeve turns to you and she raises an eyebrow. And you can tell she's trying to evaluate whether she's about to get the Ilian full of curiosity from the day prior or the apathy-stricken Ilian from this morning. Yeah. And she sort of looks at you with her feet again kind of down by the bank. Her feet aren't in the water, but she's kind of close down by the by the river bank there. Everything's fucking delightful. Thanks. It's a new skincare regimen I've adopted. I see. Um. I hope you didn't come here having changed your mind about the potion of comprehension, because it's currently taking the form of a stain on my countertop. I see. No, uh, that, that wasn't my intention uh, at all. And I'm happy to see that. I was gonna offer to maybe go get some ointment from the doctor for you, but it looks like you're already good on that end. Um, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, honestly, if you've had a long day, I don't want to bother you, Maeve. It's not a huge deal. This line of work comes with certain risks and perils. It ain't just about making what you know to turn a profit. It's about pushing boundaries. Sometimes those boundaries push back. I ain't crying over it, and neither should you, so what do you need? Well, uh, speaking of that language comprehension potion, I don't know much about alchemy. I don't know anything about alchemy. Um, but it got me thinking, I don't know exactly what the limits are of what you make or what you can make, and I wanted to know if it was possible to make a sort of potion or something that makes someone tell the truth. Is that something that you could make or give or, well, I was not give, I'd pay for it, but. <laughs> and where do you think you're planning on using this? Well, 
that's the thing is, uh, there seem to be a lot of people in town who know important things um, that... And you'd like to be one of those people know an important thing? <laughs> no, actually, I just, there's something important to me that I believe someone might know, but I don't know who I can trust in town yet. We've barely been here 48 hours, and I was hoping if I could make, if you could make two of those, if I showed I drank one and this other person drank one, and have a heart to heart about what we know, um, I just, I'm looking for a knowledge of a certain person. I don't suppose a good old-fashioned asking around would find you the information that you need. I don't think so, and as you probably know, Maeve, knowledge here seems to be a very dangerous thing, and I'm not sure who I can trust with knowledge or getting knowledge from them. Um, I just want to play it very carefully and not put anyone in danger or anything like that. If I'm being honest, I've had people request such a potion before, and I have turned them down in the past. That's not really a precedent I want to set. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be the person that people come to when they're looking to get one over on others. I see. I, I wouldn't push you on it, um, but it's only, it would only be for me to protect myself and also protect those around me. I'm not trying to get on the inside of anything, just I, uh, I need to know some important information is all. She stands, she gets kind of off the riverbank there. She brushes off the sort of bottom of her skirt there that she's wearing, and she takes another drag. I'm gonna look you in the eye real close. Of course. <laughs> and you're gonna tell me what information you're looking for, or you don't get the potion. Ooh. <laughs> Maeve, what worries me is even I'm not sure that if what I know, if you know it as well, could bring danger to you. I haven't even told my sister. I ain't no stranger to danger, sir. And Maeve, you've been a great help of me understanding Bronk Hollow in the short time I've been here, but... I know, I can't fucking get rid of you. <laughs> I'm sorry that... You seem to be the first person I go to for help because you you seem to know a lot and I... <laughs> that would be a first here in Broncalo. Maeve, I don't mean this in any rude way. I'm just protecting myself as well. How can I know that I can trust you and that you won't use this against me or hurt me or the people I know with this information? She takes a step closer. She kind of looks around. And she moves around with her mouth like close to your ear, like inches from your ear. You fucking don't. But that's a healthy fucking attitude to have. Let me ask you this before we go any further. Do you trust, what do you know or do you trust the Monteros? Monteros are fine. Mostly harmless, as far as I can tell. Okay. And while you dabble in alchemy, I don't believe this information would actually mean anything to you. Um, and if it means that I could get this potion from you, I don't mind sharing it. But I don't even know the repercussions of this info. And if you're okay with that, then I will share I know. My mother used to say my curiosity would be the death of me. I know someone like that recently. <laughs> I'm listening. All right, Maeve. Um, this is scary for me. Um, <laughs> do you... Feels wrong to say it. Do you know of the word or the meaning of uh, a yarpaya? Do you know what that means? What is that? What? 
Where did you hear that? Is that some kind of code word or something? Before I share any more information and answer that question, can you answer mine? That word's popped up a couple of times in Broncalo. Really? Nobody seems to know what the fuck it is. You come here to tell me that you might have an idea? Oh. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But that's part of what this truth business is about. I'll give you a couple for free. It ain't a secret. One time they was digging up a well up by the stubborn bluffs near the gnome tents. They was hoping to hit groundwater. They broke down into a small system of caves or something. It was useless. Couldn't pull water out of it. Anyway, they boarded it up. Days later, someone vandalized the well. Painted a word on it. Yarpaya. Can't say I gave it much thought, but as far as I could tell, nobody owned up to it or explained what it meant. A while later, Clinker got killed in the upwheel. And when they found him, he had that word carved into his chest. Fucking display of brutality it was. And I remember it well because for a short time, things were bad between Broncalo and the Clinkers. They thought one of us was trying to send a message. But since nobody seemed to know what the fucking message was, eventually they cooled off. That must be a month ago, maybe more. I see. Well, that's good to know that apparently whoever knows more about this seems to be dangerous. Um, yeah, you look like you're fucking thrilled. <laughs> so what is it then? All I know is... Do you mind if we talk more about it if... You're able to produce those potions. Not that I don't trust you, Maeve, but I... This is all I have to hold on to, and it's important to me. You want to use one of them on me? No. <laughs> it would be for... One of the Monteros. And the other one would be for me. And I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart with them, because they seem to know a lot about this valley. And I got the interpretation that, if anyone, they would have a lot of knowledge on what this is. But I wouldn't have them lying to me over something like this, and that's the only thing. All right. I'll make them. Under one condition. Okay. If you tell anyone that I made it for you, I'll kill you. <laughs> and I'll carve Yarpaya into your fucking chest. Oh, shit. You have my word, Maeve. I didn't get them from you. Perhaps something I brought into town. Make a persuasion check. Come on. I'm going to use my lucky die. <laughs> Come on. Oh, gee. Why would you the eat? The jinx <laughs> Okay, you're right. I'll change that. Oh, no. I'll change that. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay, Confidence, fine. young man. Confidence. I'll have them ready for you tomorrow. My workshop needs a little airing out at the moment. Okay. Um, what do I owe you for it? We'll talk prices when you get there. Oh, shit. Okay. And I... I said I would, so when I receive those potions, if you have any more questions, I will answer them. All right. <sighs> Thank you, Maeve. Um, please, uh... Don't kill me if that information is actually something you're holding from me. Uh, I trust you very much with what I just told you, and uh, it frankly makes me very nervous. So, <laughs> I can't wait to see you tomorrow. <laughs> Good. I like my clients nervous. Good day, Maeve. <laughs> Afternoon. I'm gonna head off. Back toward the Paramount. Back toward the Paramount? All right. That's it. Maeve has a crush on Ilian. That, <laughs> and my life is over. <laughs> she, 
I knew he was gonna become her favorite. And I was like, screwed. <laughs> you just have to talk to her constantly. <laughs> Always not give up. Shots. Wear her down. And be cute yeah. little blue elf. Slowly wear her down. Uh, oh, that was the worst. You did great. Thank you. you did After great. a very brief stop at the Lucky Heathen to inform Teddy Haas of your preferred reward, Kate heads across the river, seeking the comfort once more of a familiar face at the Merc Hall. When you pass under the arch, it looks like a pack of Daphne's mercenaries have recently returned from a hunt. There's two large dead boar and some kind of slain koala or badger type creature with long claws resting atop one of the tables. Some of the people standing around are cleaning blood from their weapons and armor, so it seems, it seems they've returned rather recently. One younger elven man smiles as he receives several handshakes and pats on the back, possibly being congratulated on his first successful hunt. Back behind the counter on the far side, Daphne sees you wander in. She puts down the quill in her hand that she was using to maybe take records or make notes. She sees you and she reaches into a drawer down by her side, produces a piece of paper, and then she presses it up against the cage on the opposite side oh, that she's shit. in, and she... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Heading over to the cage. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of dust myself <laughs> off from the uh, events of today. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you're a little sort of uh, muddied below the knee and a little waterlogged, but yeah. so are a lot of the mercenaries that are right. in here, so mm -hmm. among company that's sort of sporting the same uh, Run down uh -huh. look for the what most time part. Of, what time is it? It's getting to be about three, three thirty. Oh 30 -ish. gosh, I, I was here this morning. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to have somebody run this over to Paramount, but classic glory, you just couldn't wait, huh? <laughs> Good afternoon. Jalen helped me dig this out of the records. It's over a month old at this point, but Maeve cared enough to make a posting for it so I can't imagine their acquisition would be, wouldn't be a welcome surprise. I have to say, Daphne, this was faster than even I expected. <laughs> Thank you so much. There's some broad strokes notes on where you might find some of those creatures, but it's not much to go on. For my own scouting reports, if you remember those contracts that I gave you, a fleece mane was spotted in the downweald around the area where the direwolves are. Also, Flail snails like to hang around the plunge pools at Shattershake Falls, but that's where the aquatic trolls are. So you better watch your ass if you go hunting for them. How convenient. Wherever you decide to look, none of these, except, I don't know, maybe the ticks, are a one woman job. Find some people that you trust, or at the very least some people who you can tempt with the promise of riches. That was my next question. <laughs> Um, I have a couple questions for you. All right, Once I got again, a moment. Is this a relatively private area? She looks over <laughs> to the guy who's always kind of in the cage with her. <laughs> 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 it moves into a kind of back room. He picks up like a stacks a couple of ledgers that he had there, sort of gives it an out of the hand. Good help. It's hard to find, you know. Um, the Monteros. If I I've want heard of them. to continue to ingratiate myself to Maeve, any risk there of getting close with the Monteros and then she gets, you know, judgy. Okay. Not that I can imagine. Okay. Monteros are mostly all right by me. Less politically ambitious than Biz Izzy or Bison. Mm -hmm. Better company than some of the other dorks in town. <laughs> Great. Plus, they share my distaste for goblins, so there's that. So I found out today, got sent on a little job by them. Apparently, they wanted the group of flea bags that had um, gotten away alive from a cleric to get some work done for them. Sounds like something they do. Do you know at all about their dealings with magic? You think one of them uses magic? Never seen it. I think that they've gotten close to the line. Maybe once or twice. There's an awful lot of ways to get close to the line that have nothing to do with magic. Well, that's true. Um. 
I also wanted to ask you, in your line of work, and I'm gonna kind of like, just like do an extra like cert look around. The she premise. notices you do that, and she even like without kind of motioning or anything, she just takes like a few steps to her right, which is like further along that little cage that she's speaking to you through, yeah. just to get even more distance from the small crowd that got back from the hunt. And they're pretty boisterous. Some people are chatting and drinking, and sort of you can hear people. Yeah. Sort of, there's some clanging as people are you know doffing armor and things. So yeah. there's a bit of noise to cover yeah. conversation. Cool. <laughs> I'm gonna like to be extra cool. I'm just gonna kind of like turn my shoulders so that. I'm facing away from the rest of the people and like tilt my head down so that my hat is like covering my mouth. Sure. Um, just be like, in your line of work, have you ever heard of, in passing, um, something called black powder? Yeah. Tell me literally everything. <laughs> I wish I had more to tell than I do. Back when Brunk Hollow was a lot smaller than it is now, I remember Izzy was asking people about it. She was looking for someone who could make it. Mm. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, she never found anyone. Mm. And if I remember, Izzy was someone you said you wouldn't get into bed with, necessarily. It's just not really a bed that you can get out of is the problem. Got it. But that's it, you've never heard of its uses or what she wanted it for? I've never seen it. So, if someone's using it, they ain't making it obvious. I have a feeling if someone was using it, it would be pretty obvious. <laughs> You say so. Um, I'm planning on making a trip to um, the goblin area of town. And I was just wondering, in your opinion, how badly that would look for a newcomer if anyone would pass judgment on doing business with me if I went over there. I might. Oh, oh, oh. I'm glad I asked. I have something. Maybe you can help me and tell me what it is, and I don't have to go over there. Back in Saywall, when I was fencing product for Baker, we talked about this. I did business with goblins pretty regular. And never once did the drop ever go smooth. If you were lucky, they'd renege on the deal or try to extort you. And if you were unlucky, they'd just stip skip the talk and go straight to stabbing you. I carry more than one scar, thanks to those little mung beans. So it's a little hard to forgive and forget. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm gonna reach into my, underneath my poncho and just uh, <laughs> untie the little bag. Sure. Um, and as you're doing that as well, it doesn't even seem like she's doing it for show, but as you saw when you first kind of came here into the Merc Hall, you watch her sort of grab at her back You've seen that when you first came in and she you seem to have some kind of injury and for the first time it crosses your mind that that might be a long lasting injury and sort of mm -hmm. and sort of speaking about the goblins you put those two things together maybe for the first time. So. Yeah. It, and it doesn't even, she's not like, I got stabbed here. It's just Ugh. like, it seemed reflexive. Like, like yeah. she just was suddenly kind of aware of the pain in her back there. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> um, untie and open up the bag. Um, we found this. Um, on an already dead goblin uh, in the upwheeled. What was the upwheeled, right? Was it? Uh, the downwheel. Down, down, it was the downwheeled. Mm -hmm. God damn. <laughs> it was downwheeled. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> from the Uh uh, no. <laughs> um, pardon me, in the downwheeled. Um, there used to be more of them, some of them went missing. Um, it looks like a bone of some kind, and it seemed to be important to the goblins who came across. Man. Yeah, sure. She walks, she has to take a couple steps over because she, again, she's behind this kind of cage and the two of you are kind of leaning on a countertop so you can tuck close, but she has to go to a certain spot where there's like a hole cut out in the cage that looks like mm -hmm. you can kind of exchange items through it. So mm -hmm. she takes a step over and she pulls the bag through. <clears throat> this is nothing. These are Grick bones. So the goblins were fighting Gricks. So what? They're all over the downwheel. I don't know. I don't know 
if they had some sort of significance in the goblin community that we ran into up there that seemed to be operating separately from the goblins here in town. Hmm. Grick bones don't mean anything to me. Sounds good. I'm gonna take it, tie it, loop it back on my belt real quickly. Um, <clears throat> one more thing. You know how we were talking about that gentleman I came into town with, Mr. Welker? Yeah. I believe I said something vaguely neutral to positive about him the last time I was here. About to amend your statement. Yeah. Um, I want to do business with him, if I were you. She kind of reaches down and she takes out a very small kind of little leather bound notebook that she takes out and flips through a couple pages and scratches something out on the page. I'll let you know if that changes. He's a smart, resourceful guy, but he does not follow instructions nor care for anyone's wishes but his own. Noted. I appreciate it. Well, I'm gonna work on this. Again, thank you so much. If you hear anything of certain substance, um, let me know. You tried Maves already? Girl, <laughs> have I tried Maves? <laughs> At this point, I'm scared of going over there and making a bigger fool of myself than I already have. I mean, you mentioned you already talked to her. I just didn't know if you mentioned that specifically. I did. I'm a little worried about the potency of this substance and what might happen if it gets into the wrong hands is all. Well, like I said, other than her and Izzy, those are the best leads I got. Thank you so much again. And, and I'll be back and I'll work on those, uh, those dire wolves. Hopefully. At this moment, there's kind of a, a loud kind of, hey, three cheers, ha hey, hey! And like a cheers happening kind of on the, where the tables are. And she kind of leans over for a moment. Keep it down! She waves with her hand. Kid's name's Bristol. He's got a real knack for trap smithing. He creates devices specifically designed to trap certain kinds of creatures. Usually he stays here in the hall, tinkering away while the others go out. But this morning, I guess he wanted to see his work in action. So, first hunt for Briscoe buys him a round of drinks. Hope to see you around, Glory. You know, is there like a hole in the cage that I can like- There was where you passed the bag through, yeah. Yeah, okay, right. So I'm gonna stick my hand out. <laughs> see you soon. See you soon. I'm gonna walk out and just kind of get a look at the table. Um, where they're cheersing yeah. as I go, like looking for anything in particular. Um, <laughs> I guess not. Like <laughs> some black powder on his hands. Oh yeah. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> give me a perception check. Yeah. <laughs> anything interesting? <laughs> Is he cute? anything useful? <laughs> Anyone hot? <laughs> Anyone hot? <laughs> the hottest one. <laughs> You said insight? Uh, no, uh, oh. perception. Perception? Mm -hmm. uh, 14. 14. As you just walk by on the way out, you just get a slightly better look at the creature. Uh, give me a nature check in addition to it. You green dice for nature check. <laughs> Bad roll, seven. <laughs> seven. The creature's not familiar to you, it, so it seems to be something that might be native to mm -hmm. Broncolo Valley or the now near the upfield, yep. somewhere around the area. Uh -huh. And it has, it's this kind of marsupial looking creature with these really long, sharp claws. Like, if it didn't have these crazy claws, the creature would look kind of rather harmless or innocent, uh -huh. but it has these gnarled kind of jagged claws uh -huh. on both hands. Mm -hmm. And as you also walk by, it looks like you can see someone's breastplate, there's like a gash in it going down the armor. Ugh. So it looks like the claws are like strong or sharp enough to like uh -huh. pierce metal armor. Like that's how huh. sort of robust they, they look, but. And Bristol, you said he was an elf? Uh, yes. Yep. Elf. Anything mm -hmm. particular about him in case I need to find him again? Um, You would be able to find him again. I mean, a younger yeah. elven man and he looks like. Bristol! <laughs> he, <laughs> he wears like a red scarf that then goes down. It's like tucked into his breastplate there. So okay. he has like a sort of deep red scarf that he's wearing around his neck to keep him warm. Okay, as I'm walking my way out, I'm gonna like, as I'm passing the table, I'll just be like, congratulations. Uh, thanks. Looks like a mighty fine beast. Yeah, well, it's normally Zorbos ain't worth it, but we got them. Zorbo? Yeah. Good for eating or? or... Uh, mostly just for pride and uh, we take those claws off. 
Amazing. I'm, can I hold out my hand to him sure. quickly and just say like, uh, I'm Kate, I'm a friend of Daphne's. Uh, Bristol, nice to meet you. I heard this was a big deal today. Yeah, uh, you come by here, you're not one of the Mercs, are you? Uh, no, I'm new in town. Oh, all right. You knew uh, Daphne from the outside then? Yeah, way back, way back in school. We M trained together. Must be nice, seeing old friend. Oh, you have no idea. I'm just gonna tip my hat. Good day to you. Walk away. Right. Okay. Head on. Trying to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> she didn't like. You're doing great. <laughs> Doxley's not my friend. <laughs> Damn. Jesus. <laughs> no, Doxley. Taking a route through the thoroughfare that's fast becoming familiar to you. <laughs> you arrive at Good as Gold during a particularly busy time. A dozen or more people browsing the wares while the brothers look on from those raised, seated platforms. Directing people to goods and sort of answering some questions as they come up. The most popular items right now seem to be shallow pans with ridges along the interior. And the mood in here is quite spirited. A couple other times you come through here and people are kind of idly browsing the wares or just picking something up, paying, leaving, very transactional. Mm -hmm. But it seems like there's almost like a little buzz of excitement here in the store. People are kind of talking to each other. People have pans in their hands. People are very sort of uh, spirited. <laughs> And the customers, while animated in their inquiries, it seems like Bailey and Dustin seem to be very happy for the influx of sales. They're yeah. sort of smiling and sort of pointing to different tools and things for people. Near the counter, but set off to the side, is a shovel adorned with a piece of parchment <laughs> that says, shovel, <laughs> comma, reserved. <laughs> Though that it doesn't stop a dwarven woman from, she goes over and she kind of picks it up and inspects it, only to be politely reprimanded by the shopkeeper. Excuse me, but that shovel is already reserved. Please feel free to select from our rack of tools on the other side of the room. And she looks at the shovel and looks at the rack <laughs> and it's the exact same shovel. <laughs> and she sort of puts it back in its place and oh my God. <laughs> a ding dong. And walks over to the other side of the yeah. shop there. Yeah. So you're kind of at the door. Ooh. I'm the ding dong, by the way. If, <laughs> yeah. if that wasn't oh, clear. No, we were, we and he okay. sees you approach the doors of the shop. Mm -hmm. Mr. Welker. Did your plans for the afternoon clear up? Um, we weren't expecting you until closer to seven. Yes, uh, in fact, it was actually a, a few other things that came to mind that I... Of course. Uh, uh, your shovel's been set aside yeah. as you request. <laughs> yes, thank you. Is there anything else I can get for you? Yes. Uh, when you were last here, you said maybe you'd have a dozen shovels. <laughs> A dozen? <laughs> I told you the price and you found it to be very reasonable. Oh, and <laughs> I believe you. I recall now. Based on yes. the look on your face now, it may have been a joke. No, something, um, <clears throat> a few dozen, how about this? Parchment and a quill. Of course, yes, parchment. Um, he has like stacks of paper and thing. Um, oh. So it's, it's just a silver for per piece of, of fine paper that he has there. Um. All right. Uh, yes, I'll take um, I'll take fifteen of those. Uh, of course, well, one gold, five mm. silver for the paper. Perhaps a, a, a mediocre uh, um, quill and ink. Uh, yes, uh, it's just um, two gold for the quill and a bottle of ink that should last for a good long while. Fair enough. Thank you. Of course. Uh, and I'll just take that on the way out. I'll hand over the... <laughs> I hesitate to ask, but did you get caught in the downpour earlier? It was raining very hard there for a while. I haven't even had a chance to fully <laughs> dry off. No, uh, yes, I did. I, I don't suppose you're here for the same reason as the others. Right, is there, uh, is this when the, the rivers flow thick with the, the goods? Uh, sort of, yes. I believe they discovered some new placer deposits in the downwheel, so ready for panning in the river. Hmm. It's not anyone's claim, so there's quite a bit of scramble to get there, get your right. feet wet. A specific place? Uh, they did not tell me. I mm. believe that uh, the more people who know, the less there is to go around. Mm. Well, with a crowd like this, I suppose I could just follow them there, couldn't I? I suppose you could, <laughs> yes. <laughs> As you say, that's some of the people that are that sort of like give you just like a dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> they're gathering their wares. Mm. Thank you again. Of course. Um, he kind of looks around, motions you up to the counter. I'll, uh... <laughs> Earlier next week, we should be getting some rocker boxes and sluice boxes. Oh. So if the, if the uh, stream proves out, 
feel free to come back and get a nice upgraded piece of equipment and go to the river and get yourself some gold. Ah, do I know what those are? <laughs> uh, those are both equipment for panning for gold. It's just yeah. a better way. So you can manually pan, right. and then there's what's called a rocker box, which is like a larger wooden device that you put a whole bunch of like yeah. dirt and water into and you yeah, rock right. it back and forth and it, mm. it, it separates them. It has like a series of sieves and things, so it separates the uh, right. metals from the just the sand and other mm. lighter sediment. Mm. Uh, I suppose other than that, uh, you had mentioned a, uh, a list of imports uh, uh, the first yeah. time I was here. Is there anything I try not new? to be overly involved in gossip or rumor or scuttlebutt, but word <laughs> has gotten around that you and a few of the other new arrivals yeah. quickly made yourselves very helpful to some of the long-standing members of the camp. And in light of that, if you ever wanted to peruse uh, the Samson and Samson <gasps> Imports catalog, uh, we could allocate some space on the next round of wagons if you wanted to put in a request or two. Uh, you don't have to, it's May not a requirement. Uh, you still get to take your shovel even if you don't. <laughs> Just something that I wanted to inform you of should you find yourself in need of a specialty item that we don't currently stock here at Good as Gold. Right. Hands that to you. Oh, I can also bring up. Let's go. go. Yeah, what are we at? Oh, yeah. What is available to me? Um, I don't know. Buy something go. silly. Morna does. Morna has enough okay. gold. So yeah. I've been tracking subs. <laughs> Hi, Stream Elements has been tracking our subs. There we go. I was just cool. looking. Oh. We have 518 subs. Oh. So for every sub. No. Oh, One sorry. of every. Yes, please. no, it's okay. Uh, just a reminder that the like price is listed in here. It's basically kind of like renown or reputation. Okay. That's not the gold cost of the item. You still have yeah. to pay with gold the item. This is just basically saying, could you allocate some space on your wagon for this yeah. set of props? You know, on yeah. your on your next thing. So if we roll through this very quickly, some things have been added. We have some resistance uh -huh. potions, oils, ammunition. ammunition of a special kind, acid. A few sort of magical items of varying Ooh. rarities. Wow. The, uh, yeah, we Tanglefoot. Oh, Thunderstone. Smoke sticks, Thunderstones, I mean, Tanglefoot. Cards are better than that, but the um, Tanglefoot. Some elixirs um, who uh, Baldur's Gate players might recognize oh. from the game. Uh, we took some of those ideas. Viciousness, bloodlust. Um, oh, you have a bloodlust? No way. Yeah, like, you guys. guys. Some, another type of ammunition, beast slaying barbs that are Particularly oh, effective. Yeah, no. um, that's um, some other drafts and oils. Um, oh my god, you added so, so much stuff. Yes. Void bulb? Void bulb. Oh, yeah. you know, if you I have any questions about something in particular. Oh my god. god. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Please give me a I only. Uh, don't spend all our subs. I will say um, we only have so much space that we can allocate. So course, depending course. on what you want, uh, we may only be able to get one or two on the next right, wagon. Right, right, right. These, uh, I just have a couple of questions about these or little <laughs> jars of things. Yes, the I oil of combustion and the tangle foot. Yes, uh, the tangle foot is like a jar of sticky stuff, and it gets stuff stuck in it. It right. tangles your feet. Uh, that's why it's called tangle foot. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. Um, and then, what was the other oil of combustion? Combustion. It's a very volatile substance that you would um, sort of rub on something or spray or throw. And then if you ignite the oil, it makes a rather large ball of flame. So it's a way to quickly uh, clear something, uh, perhaps wooden or vulnerable to fire. Now, I've dallied with a little bit of... Um, <clears throat> Alchemist's fire in the past. Yes. That combusts on its own. Yes. It's this more powerful similar. than Alchemist's fire, but you do have to ignite it manually. It does not blow up on its own the way Alchemist's fire Perhaps it does. covers a larger area. It does indeed, yes. It's a bigger bottle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that nice. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, having just got to town, I'm still a little short on funds. Uh, uh, if you were able to get perhaps a bottle of each of those to me, how much would that cost? Yeah, some of the um, sort of single-use items, things that you would use once and then it would be no longer good, those are less expensive, could run anywhere between 50 to 200 gold, depending on which one and the potency of the item. All right, all right. Um, you know, I suppose I'd perhaps Build up my stock of gold. That's all right. We have it. many of those catalogs, so if you'd like to keep it and have oh. a look. I would like that. <laughs> no. 
I would say that uh, the reputation extends to those that arrived with you, so don't just give the catalog to anyone. Uh, we, right. we won't accommodate the orders of someone we don't know. I suppose I could share with my friends. If you wish, or keep it to yourself, Mr. Welker. Mm. But I will say if one of them comes to the store, I will tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so dutiful. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, Mr. Welker. I'll put these with my parchments and careful Great. inks and bottles and uh, <sighs> I'm just right down in the open. Yep, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, stroll out and just pick up that shovel there and okay. Where are you headed to next? I'm gonna head back to the Paramount. Okay. Yeah, there's one. I'd Bef like to, sorry. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> with my eagle eye. Um, if I see any of my these people <laughs> friends, and, yeah. associates, if I if I see anyone, I'd like to keep a sharp eye to see if I see them that I could know before they do. Okay, but sure. yeah, um, give me a perception check. Okay, um, and keep it in mind. Uh, fourteen. Okay, Great. yeah. We are going to pivot over to Paramount, but before uh, Ilian and uh, TC have arrived, I think I forgot to ask you, were you headed somewhere in particular after uh, the Merc Hall? Um, uh, you can take a second to think about it. Let me think about it. Yeah, I just didn't, know, about I yeah, I just didn't know if I had asked you already. Let me consult my to-do list. On the front <laughs> porch of Paramount Lodging, Doxley has staked out her spot. And with bottle in hand, she watches the foot traffic ebb and flow in the thoroughfare. There's no salty breeze, but it has the same energy as posting up by the docks in Slim Harbor. A whirlwind of comings and goings with the notable discrepancy that you're not recognizable to very many of the people who meander by, at least for now. You keep your eyes peeled for the agitated man who is having a letter sent at Izzy's, but he never materializes. If he has a job that takes him out of town, like if he's mining or logging, it still might be too early to expect him to return. It's not quite sort of the end of sort of standard working hours. Mm -hmm. You do, however, see someone else from the same encounter. The unsociable halfling, Micah, walking side by side with another stockier man in a brown overcoat who has an impressive assortment of rings on both of his fingers, both of his hands. As they pass in front of Paramount, Micah turns his head and for the briefest of moments makes eye contact. Predictably expressionless, but acknowledging your presence all the same. She'll give him a wink as she... Mm. The moment ends. And the two of them continue west toward Detention Pass. And once again, you're left alone. Just you, strangers, and whiskey. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. I think as she continues to sit, oh, she wants to allocate some time to like clean up and have a bath before her dinner with yeah, Ilian and Niall. Time for, no. So I think she is just going to sit, and I think she was also hoping to see TC at one point. Okay, <laughs> keeping an eye out. Yeah. So as you sit Sweet. and wait, <laughs> knowing that uh, some of your traveling companions have attended some other business, and you're not expecting him right away, so you take a moment, you relax. You just let yourself sit, take in the environment around you. Maybe one of the first times you've had a moment to kind of view the town from a distance and kind of see where people are headed, where people are going, without worrying about where you need to be next. Some time passes and a number of people have come in and out of the hotel as you've been sitting here. The hotel has a number of rooms, so it's not unusual, it has a kitchen as well. But you now hear the sound of heavy footsteps kroom, kroom, that come to a stop right behind you. You look over your left shoulder and you turn to see Gujek Claiborne. Yeah. And he has a small, like, footstool in his left hand. And he gestures to the spot beside you. <laughs> gestures for him to sit, picks up the bottle. He puts the stool down and he sits on it and it's literally, it's a foot, so his knees are like up at his chest <laughs> and he has his hands kind of folded over his knees there. And he sits there and he just kind of sits with you for a moment. She'll hand the bottle to him. He like looks around for a glass. She sees him doing that and just like 
gives the bottle a wave. Gives it to him. <laughs> Cheers. Funny place. Motions to sort of Broncolo as a whole. That's one word I'd give it, yeah. So many people for such a new place. So many people to maybe do business with. Yeah. Is that how you see it? Mm. Is it wise, do you think? to work exclusively for one person in a place with so ma many people and so much opportunity. No. Hmm. But that's just me. I'm assuming those are the terms that Izzy gave you, yeah? She promises much. Gold, renown, power. But can she deliver? Well, I'm about as new as you are, friend, but if there is somebody in town that you want to align yourself with, in particular, her name's as good as any. Mm. But, personally for me, I think my freedom comes with a little more of a price. You did not hear the price. Mm. And he kind of smiles. <laughs> That's true, my friend. Were you, uh, comfortable sharing that space, alone? I did not feel afraid. All right. Didn't like you being in there by yourself. Hmm. Thank you. I saw you out the window. Yeah. Do you usually try to hide? No. <laughs> the way I see that, you're just asking to get caught and then you have explaining to do. You're just doing it out in the open. I'm sure they'll get mad, but they could get madder. Seems to <laughs> agree with that. You're so ready. <laughs> I come from the north. Ogram Mountain. Small village, smaller than this. Only orcs. <laughs> I was not a good fighter, but I was smarter than most, maybe all. He looks around for a moment. <laughs> I do not think I am the smartest here. Well, once you've been the smartest in your one small town, you'll grow if you leave it. Mm. Big fish, <laughs> small pond. Yeah, small fucking ponds. Mm. When an orc would lie to me, I would see it. Very smart, knew them very well. But when people here lie, they hide it good. Hard to see through it. Hard to know if she lies. I 
don't think that a person such as Izzy got to where she was today by being bad at it. Hmm. I don't think that she got to where she was debating what was right and what was wrong. Where are you from? From Peran. You aware of it? I know it. Were you the smartest in Peran? <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck no, I wasn't the smartest. Mm. You're looking at my brother for that one. Mm. But. Perhaps the hungriest. We're Not enough to eat in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, hunger is to say, uh, drive. Ah, Hungry for something else out of life. Yes. What do you do when you don't help me? <gasps> I don't know. That's what I'm here to figure out. Hmm. Help others like you. Although it's hardly help, you're paying me, you know. It's not out of the kindness of my heart, as sweet as you are, Gujak. Paid help still help. Never really saw it that way, but yeah. Can I ask you, now that you and I have a good rapport, what is it that you have in your little cases up in that room? Until I decide whether to work exclusively for Izzy or not, I cannot say. I understand. She paid for me to come here. Meaning that your correspondence were significant before your travels? We wrote through letters. How did you know of her? She found out about me. She found you all the way in the north? Yes. How? I am sure we will have a longer talk about that. Not a lot of people that do what I do. Jack. Hmm. If I can give you just a little bit of advice. Please. Even if you give that woman everything, or at least agree to, have a fucking backup plan. Or always be figuring out how to be useful. Hmm. Because if you can do something that she can't do, and she needs it, you'll stay alive. become indispensable. Thank you. Wish I could help you more, but like I said, not the smartest in Peron, not the smartest air. Hmm. Just a couple of dummies here. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Thank you. I have some shopping to do. <laughs> so he gets up off that stool. You know where to find me if you need me. He looks around at the porch. Not always here, I'm, I'm upstairs. Huh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll be here for a while though. Hmm. I hope so. He tips his head. <laughs> Steps off the porch and mm -hmm. begins to walk. Anything else while Doxley's waiting there for a moment? You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she's gonna sit and think for a bit. Why don't you go? We're gonna piss or something. Don't you got a don't you gotta blast after all that whiskey? Go piss, girl. Go piss. Piss, girl. Go get it, girl. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, hey girl. girl. Get out of here. We're going to pivot and sort of move back in time. This is actually sort of happening simultaneously. We're going to pivot to the interior of Paramount Lodgings. Back in the lobby and sort of craving the contentment of a bath, Morna stands among the small crowd of patrons who have come to eat or converse with friends in one of the several booths along the back wall. For a few seconds, you stand by the door and you just kind of massage your hands, which you only now notice have a very slight tremble to them. Ever since coming back from your most recent rage out at the tavern, you've had a little bit of mild heartburn. Oh my God. And you find yourself kind of swallowing and taking long inhalations to kind of suppress anything else that might come up that should stay down. A very focused moment of stillness and concentration is broken by a voice. And as you turn, there's Bassett Clemens and he's come out from behind his desk and he just touches you very lightly on the shoulder. Everything all right, man? Yes. Or do I rudely interrupt your waiting for someone? Um, no, no, um, do you have towels? I would like to take a bath. Of course, if you circle around to the back side of the staircase, there's a door that leads to a washroom. The water in the tubs is clean, but if you'd like me to have Kenzo fetch a kettle, I'd be more than happy to have him heat it up. That sounds... Yes, thank you, thank you. I will let him know. T -t Towels are in there. There are hooks on the wall. Thank you. Kindly. I don't believe there's anyone in there at the moment, so uh, a bit of peace and quiet for yourself. Exactly what I am looking for. <laughs> thank you kindly. Of course. He goes back to his desk. And I'm gonna go downstairs, and it's one of those things where I'm suddenly back in my body and very aware of the clothes, just feeling wet and awful, and every body sensation is bad. <laughs> and Everything's clinging to you. There's no part of your body that when you move it, it like it just clothing hangs free. Suddenly so <laughs> overwhelmed with sensation and just longing to get out of that. So she goes downstairs to get a little quiet away from people. Are you heading into the washroom? Yeah. Great. You you the, you open up the little door that's underneath the staircase, and as the door closes behind you, the sounds of the kitchen crowd become very muted. You find a very humble area with six large basins, and each of them are separated by folding privacy screens. There's bars of soap laid out next to folded washcloths, and it looks like there's even a pumice stone for scraping away particularly troublesome patches of mud or dirt. Oh. So there's six of there. Basically, you walk in and there's on your left one, privacy screen two, privacy screen three, and same on the other side. She's gonna go to the third one on the, you know, as far down as she can go on the, on the re le left. And then, yeah. you know, on the, uh, uh, uh. Has to be yeah. on the left. <laughs> and she's gonna, um, I guess, I, do I have to wait for Kenzo to get down there with the kettle? I mean, that kettle Kenzo. It, it depends on your level of modesty. Like, he will come in and pour the water. Is that... She's gonna wait. <laughs> but Aww. she doesn't want, you know what, actually, no. She, like, she's, come on, <laughs> don't she's gonna, you just got oh, bullied and got naked. naked. I'm no, an asshole, gonna, don't listen to she's me. She's gonna get naked and she's gonna take the towel and she's like, this is not a very big towel. <laughs> so she's gonna put, the f towel on here, and she's gonna put another towel on there. You go to the other base, and you take that yeah. one off the rack. Why, why are there so many teeny <laughs> towels in the Paramount? <laughs> she's very modest. The deal so, yeah, and she's just gonna times. wait for Kenzo, and that feels a little bit better, but she's is also just kind of like, really sort of uh, focused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to keep it fucking together over here. Right. A few excruciatingly long moments as you're wrapped in two towels pass by, and finally you hear kind of a the door swings open, and you hear a little bit of shuffling, and as you look around the privacy screen, the larger man that served you your potato skins from Hell the other yeah. day sort of comes in, <laughs> and he has sort of a padded grip with a large kind of kettle, and he kind of shuffles his way in, and he doesn't see you immediately because you're behind one of the screens. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Huh. Sort of wands over. Uh. Medium, hot. Hot, hot. Takes it and he pours the whole thing as it pours in. <laughs> Some of the steam rises, a little bit of vapors kind of filling the air around you. Mm. Breathe it in and you just let that kind of fill your lungs a little bit. And he pours the whole kettle, he tips it all the way in. Ooh, mm. it. 
and the basin's pretty big, so it's not gonna scald you. It's mixing Damn with it, cold yeah. water. It was still water that was sort of sitting there. Scald those sins away. <laughs> and he finally tips the thing back. Anything else? No, thank you. Enjoy your bath. Thanks. <laughs> and it goes out. You hear the door again. Close the spot. She's gonna take the towels and hang them on, and she's gonna sort of get into the bathtub and just slowly, you know, ease her way into the hot water. And when she's in the tub, sort of suddenly realize that it's this sort of battle with her own body and sensation has been happening for a month. And Mm -hmm. she, in this moment, is overwhelmed and emotional and she puts her head all the way under the water Mm -hmm. and thinks if i can stay here for as long as i can then eventually my body will force me to come out of the water and when my lungs give out i will be okay and so she waits there and holds her breath for as long as she can until she can't and gasps out of the water. Yeah, yeah, you stay there and like a couple times you just push through it and like there's like a like a bubble here. Yeah. And then finally <laughs> you burst forth from the tub and you give a quick kind of peek around just because when you were under the water you, yeah. just, you wouldn't necessarily have been able to hear a door open. So you give a quick look around just to see if anyone's entered since then. It hasn't been that long. Nobody else has entered into the room since then. So she doesn't feel that much better. <laughs> oh. She sort of lets her, any sort of affect that was coming up, go back to its neutral, calm state and Can I like stay in the bath and take a short rest? You, you can absolutely stay in the I'm bath. I'm gonna stay there As until the bath pickling. gets cold. Great. And she gets soggy sure. and she's gonna just <laughs> stay there and try to dissociate. Okay. As you sit up, there's sort of that violent motion of you coming up out of the water. <laughs> the, the water in the tub kind of sloshes back and forth and some of it kind of goes up over the edge, <laughs> spills out on the floor and you let the water settle. And then almost as if like a different person entered the tub, you reach over and grab the bar soap <laughs> and the washcloth. <laughs> and you begin to wash. We're gonna pivot around to the outside. We're the first to kind of amble through the thoroughfare in the direction of Paramount is TC, Mm -hmm. who having gone to good as gold now approaches the front and you see the only person out on the porch because Mm -hmm. there's really not seating out there is Doxley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I'll just go to walk up to the... As soon as she sees you across the thoroughfare, you'll see her with her bottle and... Well, if it isn't the charmer! (gasps) And she's gonna get up out of her chair. You, my friend... Oh my god. ...did something today. Where back on the shores and at Slim Harbor, we would have had to sit down and have a proper talk about how you hurt my feelings, but we're not in Slim Harbor anymore. So, and I she's gonna start I, taking dear. off her jacket. Oh, dear. Fight, fight, and fight. she's going to punch him in the face. <laughs> oh, Put the bottle God. down. Punch him in the face. And she's going to. Oh <laughs> my God. No, oh, my. we get to settle this. Without any gods or any clerics, my dear. I'm gonna fuck us up. My dear oh, lady. My <laughs> so, the way I see it, I could hold a grudge against you, and you could always be wondering if I'm coming at you one day to get back at you. Or, we could just duke it out now and forget it ever happened. Boy. TC tries to get a word in edgewise throughout <laughs> this and finally gives up and takes the shovel and just kind of leans it for a second and... Oh, the shovel. Um, oh, are, you, are you quite finished? I'm done. 
Single con- multiple conversation. I thought we already talked about this, but I suppose you've already forgotten that. Seems you can't keep very much inside of that soggy head of yours. All right, um... Fuck you, If this will help you get over it... I think it will. And then you can go on to save the souls of whatever other innocent thing you find. Doxley starts <laughs> oh rolling my up her sleeves. God. Oh, oh no. Doxley rolls does up her sleeves. She look a little drunk. Yes, she look like she does. She's... Not plastered, yeah. but uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> What's happening now? And uh, <laughs> what, what we're gonna do? Actually, we're gonna take our break oh. here, so we can set up. Oh. For those of us that uh, weren't here for the last campaign, if people are joining us, um, this is a homebrew creation called Pugilism. Which is a sort of fist fighting mini game that uh, instead of I'm dealing so real damage to each other, it's just a, a bout of skill rather than one of, of dire consequences. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll do a little round of pugilism when we get back. Oh, I'm so oh, excited! Oh. Wait for you to regret this! <laughs> Here comes How the dare shuffle, you! Knew, Daxley. You knew you know me, you bitch! <laughs> what? What do you mean? No, I can't fucking turn this down! <laughs> <laughs> You monster! <laughs> uh, so when we get back, we'll go. We'll do a real quick primer of the rules, and then we'll dive back in. Oh, I'm so uh, excited for a little to fist walk fighting mini game. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where we're gonna take a break. Um, enjoy our little video as always. Oh. Um, everybody got Powerball. a chance to have a private oh, moment yes. for themselves. Yeah, everybody, get your fingers ready for the Powerball. Um, and now as people are starting to converge once more, we'll see uh, what there might be in store for everybody. Yeah, so on TikTok, we're gonna just go offline and come back in 15 minutes. Uh, we just play like silly little puzzle videos on Twitch while we're away. Um, but Twitch, you know the drill. Good luck on the Brunk Power, con- power Ball. Nobody steal my yeah. numbers. <laughs> yeah, 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 God. Yeah, he doesn't want to split the pot. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh my gosh. Split VIP. Oh my gosh. All right. We'll see. All right, everybody. We'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye. Oh, Absolutely. is there a goblin red light district where. Like... <laughs> oh, oh, come on! Notches. The second notch in soda. Yeah. People want to know what was in the note. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm dying to know. <laughs> There's going to be a couple of redacted. I can't wear this top. You gotta to switch to the clear hat. You wanna, you wanna wear my purple hat? Yeah. No! Oh, yeah. I was trying. Get out of my business. <laughs> I'm not in your business. I was inviting you to enter mine. Why would I? <laughs> you're the, you're villain. the villain! Is that why you're vilifying her? I'm the villain in my own story! That's the song from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. <laughs> Javelin of Redacted. Oh my god. Ah, Properties. But it has I'd rather rock. not hear any of it. <laughs> if it flips heads, I will play Alien this way. Because, no. and if it flips tails, I will play Alien this way. Sick. Alien needs to talk to you about, like, it's soon. Oh, we're gonna talk happen. more about this shit. How do we do? The clerics are gonna attack so much. much. Um, I mean, could five of us take out the whole gorilla? Yeah, yeah. For sure. It's a pretty small, <laughs> modest <laughs> operation. <laughs> I think Roll five of us plus Daphne. Cheers! Yay! Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hello. We, hope, we hope you got your popcorn ready because <laughs> it's time to kick off a good old fashioned pugilism. Whoa, right. Before we go over some of the very basics, we're not going to go on every single thing. Um, but before we do go over that stuff, would you like to give a little thing? Oh, plans? yes, of course. Sorry, yes. I'm, I'm so focused on beating you. <laughs> that is never going to happen. <laughs> Remember when I did, though, that one time? No, wh- oh, I, you, oh, that time? You're making it up. We took side bets. <laughs> it's on tape, bro. We, we've taken side oh, bets. Yeah, we placed actual monetary oh, wait, real life bets. Oh, well, you didn't? What do you guys well, think? I got a bet. I can't. Hey, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. keep it to yourself. Yeah, I can keep it a secret. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, fine. Caleb Work will uh, subscribe with fun. Plain Rug subscribe. Spike82 gifted a sub. Words of a Mute resubscribe. GF Powers resubscribe. Cool Shaver did 500 bits. Dave the One resubscribe. Wiz Brown gave out five community subs. Thank you. Jay Brownie 1991 did 1,000 bits. Vexalon did 201 bits. Two Bird resubscribed. Spike82 did 200 bits. Hopeful Optimist resubscribed. And then that random Twitch guy did 300 bit arenas. Thank you. Nobody Thank you won the Powerball. Oh. You know, it's it's difficult seven. to do. That's a, that's yeah. a tricky one. So thank you all very, very much. I, I know they made it look easy now. Yeah. I know. Okay. <clears throat> Outside of Paramount Lodgings, 
with the thoroughfare still a little sort of muddy and damp from the rainfall earlier. We find ourselves in a match of pugilism wow. between Doxley and TC. Now, uh, this can be found on our Patreon uh, yeah. material, but we'll get. I'll, I'll explain the very, very basics of it, and then we'll hop in. Basically, it's a way to um, have sort of a, a sport fight rather than one that actually sort of threatens anyone's life or anything. Um, the very, very basics of it are this. Uh, you roll for composure at the very beginning, which is sort of your ability to take hits without going down. You then take turns playing, there's attack cards and defense cards. So some there's like a jab, there's a there's strike. A, these ones and these ones, but I can't show them to you. <laughs> oh my God. So there's attack and defense cards and you take turns. One person will throw their attacks, the other person reveals their defense and the defense might say something that might negate some of the attacks. So it might say like negate a jab attack or something. So basically you're trying to whittle down your opponent's composure before they whittle down yours. <laughs> it's mostly a game of trying to read your opponent. It's not so much based in character stats with the exception of the very beginning, we're gonna do our composure rolls, <laughs> but it's a little more of a mental game than it is anything else. Um, especially if you are playing to the best of your ability and not sort of playing your, your character's uh, strengths and weaknesses. It's so hard to play as my character, it's so hard. <laughs> I just wanna play as Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> just wanna win. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do. Just wanna win. As they square off and Doxley puts her <laughs> bottle down is we're gonna roll for composure. And what that means is I need you guys to get your hit die. Yep. The size oh, of your hit die. I have crackle pop. Do you have a bunch of extra paper? And oh. do you have two of them? Cause you're gonna roll with advantage. I have two. Uh, oh, both sorry, of us? That yeah, that's perfect. Stop trying to get the upper hand already. <laughs> you're the one who's all being emotional about this. <laughs> <laughs> Combatants roll for composure. Roll one hit die with advantage and add 15 and your con modifier. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. With advantage, so we're with just taking the best. Yep, taking the higher number. <clears throat> and you don't have to tell the other person what it is, but the, the higher number plus your con mod plus 15. <sighs> so I don't have to say what it was. No, you do not have to say what it was. <clears throat> Anthony's? What? Yeah. What? <laughs> What do you want? Oh, did you roll bad? No. What did he look like? It was no, like very bad? intense. I don't know, he's uh, <laughs> losing his shit over there. I am. <laughs> All right, let's go. Combatants roll for initiative. Go ahead and make an initiative roll. And that's where you use our stats. Yes, your actual initiative. <laughs> you can't oh make this my. up, folks. This you do need to say out loud so we know. Initiative 18. Natural one. Natural one. <laughs> so Doxley will be attacking first, oh, or your player one in this okay. round, and you player two. So the way it works is we Bash throw attacks tumbling. and defend back and forth until someone's composure becomes zero, at which point they get knocked down. Then they get to get back up and make a new composure roll, and basically it's the first to get knocked down twice loses. It's a best of three situation. Are you okay? <laughs> I want her to win. I'm, like, I'm, ready. I'm ready, I'm rooting. The fight begins. Both players look through their deck and choose two attack cards, the tan colored cards, and one defense card, the blue background cards placing them face down on the table. After all six cards are face down on the table, then we'll wait. Got it. <laughs> the combatants reveal their cards in the following order. So player one attacks first. So that's gonna be Doxley. You ready, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Are you ready, sweetheart? TC kind of just doesn't even put his hands up right away. He's like, waits for her to get almost all the way over to him and he's like, as you guys circle each other, you can already tell some people in the thoroughfare are wandering over. Oh, some shit. people with drinks are kind of coming by. You see a couple of people kind of tap and point. Someone who's kind of riding a horse that has a wagon behind it through the thoroughfare, he sort of, you can see he's annoyed. He sort of sits up on his bench and he goes like he's about to wave you out of the way, but then he sees that a fight is happening and he, oh, and he kind of pulls over yeah. and he like watches from a distance there. So what are yeah, you throwing? Yeah, Doxley closes in, biggest fucking shit eating grin on her face. And she's gonna come in and she's gonna do a nice low strike to the gut and then come up with a head jab on the left. What do you defend what do you with? Got? I will negate the non-jabs with my footwork. Okay, okay. great. So the non-jab is the strike. Correct. All right, so you still take two fatigue. And I take three for playing footwork. Yeah, so okay. certain defenses, because they're rather taxing, like footwork, uh, reduce your composure as well. Okay. It's hard when you got those thick cheeks. Spend, <laughs> yeah, it's very I hard. spend a composure playing the strike. Yeah, so she misses with the head, but then comes in <laughs> to the body. Nice. Mm. 
Oh, here we go. <laughs> what do you come back with? <laughs> <laughs> TC smiles and comes back with a around the side, a body strike, Ooh. and then another on the other side. Oh, Double okay. body strike. Duck and weave. Both of them hit. Yep. That will take eight composure off of you. Okay. Doxley oh. thinks that TC is gonna work his way to the head, but he comes in one side of the body, then the other. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Come on, Dox. Come so on. another round Dox. begins, okay. same okay. thing happens. You take your cards back and you remain player one and you remain player two mm -hmm. until someone gets knocked down and then you switch. So you continue to attack first. Okay, okay. Okay. Um. Ooh, 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 okay, 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 okay. 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 I've never seen Anthony okay. so excited about anything. I'm also gonna say, at this point, with the fight a little bit underway, this is about when Ilian's coming back. So as you're walking, you see a couple people like running by you, and at first you think there might be something like happening, something yeah. dangerous or something. You see a couple of people sort of, huh, let's call it, like pointing and stuff. Somebody like runs into a building kind of over on your left and comes out with two bottles, and they kind of <laughs> run in the direction of Paramount there. Excuse me, what's going on? Fight at the Paramount! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, what do we got? Go ahead and throw your. All cards. right. Doxley's coming in and getting low and going boom, boom, right in the gut twice with a body strike times two. <sighs> oh, they both hit. Yes! General defense. <sighs> Couple smacks to the guy. You feel your How fist. How much do I take? Hit wet clothing. <gasps> when you <laughs> when you bring your fist back, you can see your own imprint on his wet clothes there from having been soggy in the rain. And I uh, spent two doing that. Gotcha. Uh, oh, I didn't. Did I spend mine last time? I'm sorry. Real quick, I did double body strike. You did. Right? Yeah. It should have been two fatigue for that. Uh, two fatigue. Oh no, no, I. Uh oh. Do we need a? Sorry. <laughs> if you don't remember, I'm gonna say you have to knock. No, no, it's right okay. here from 16 okay. to 14, and now I just, I mean. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I did, I took off the two, yes. Okay. Uh, right. And then you've now done the two strikes there? Yes. Great. Yes. All right, after that, TC comes in with his attacks. What do you got? Head jab, body strike. All right, general defense, negate one non-heavy. She gets to so. get the strike. Yep, yep. so you so, take two. So you, a little jab and pops one. Doxley, but then he comes, he tries to use that as a feint to come into the body and you knock it out oh. of the way there. <sighs> <laughs> I won't have to watch my back for your brother, will I? The fuck's that supposed to mean? <laughs> She's gonna come and- Hit him again! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God! Okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have I arrived? Okay. And I'm just take. I can just take it in for a sec. Yeah, especially if you you saw them running and you kind of started a light jog yeah. just to see what the fuss was about. And now you're kind of at the edge of the circle here, looking in, and a sight that you've seen once or twice <laughs> yeah. before in your in your lifetime. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, okay. Um, um, God. Uh. I love the idea that Ilian knows who started this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, fight at the at the Paramount, yeah, Ilian's like, oh god. Doxley's been yeah. drinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, what do, right, you what do you got? All right, she's gonna come in nice and close and pop, pop, right in your nose with double jab head. Double head jab. <gasps> Those will both hit. Ooh, How baby. much is that? Yeah. Uh, you take a four total. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, Doc, I've seen you knock th people three times this size down. <laughs> Shut your mouth. And yeah. I spend none. Yep. I'll, oh, who was it? <laughs> <laughs> body heavy, body jab. Counter. She counters the body heavy, so she gets to send back. Which one was first in the order? Body the heavy. heavy? Okay, so. Well, it's uh, just negate one to heavy. I know. The order might matter because oh. it might knock oh, him down. Oh, because it might knock him down. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and read counter. All right, negate one heavy attack and deal half of it back to your opponent. Yeah, I'm out. Great, so <gasps> as he goes for the heavy, oh. Doxley uses that momentum, pushes him to the side, and <laughs> knocks TC on his butt. <laughs> And there's a that. kind of a roar. Yeah, yeah she does like right. circles around you, like little karaoke dance. <laughs> now, new composure roll for TC. Is, am I still with advantage? I was thinking, can I be rolling up to Paramount? <laughs> uh, well? Is that where you were yeah. headed? Sorry, yeah. we didn't check in. I'm great. trying to look, find Ilian, so I went okay. back to Paramount. Great, you went back to Paramount, so we'll say that you arrive as well. Uh, this is not with advantage. Uh, the, only the first composure is with advantage. Yeah, I got a two with advantage last time. Whoa. Oh, that's tough. Ooh. Better. 
Uh, all right. Uh, Fifteen plus con. Uh, let me make sure I'm doing the right. Thing. Here real quick. <laughs> uh, like nothing. Yeah. She's done this once or twice. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. What is okay. it? Doxley's at the Slim Harbor. It's, I... it's entertainment for everybody. We're not oh. retconning. You're rolling the wrong dice. Your hit dies a D8, not a D6. Oh no! Oh, you dumb dumb. Why you he's a little lizard? exhausted here and not getting his oh, full strength. Baby boy. <laughs> you can give me. Um, I award him something. You can give me one D8 roll there. We had to, you, we can, we're not going to wreck on the old. Oh yeah. no, not no. I, but can I? Re I'm redoing this one. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Blessed. You <laughs> 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 Um, oh, literally one more. Great. <laughs> I thought you went down pretty easy. <laughs> I was. You can Doc shut up. Doxley's offering you a hand back up. <laughs> Come back on. To his feet. All right. Round two begins. All right, TC, get some good ones in on this one. All right. Mm. Shut up, Hill. <laughs> Here we go, here we okay. go, here we okay. go. What am I gonna okay. do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. As Ilian's okay. kind of shouting from the crowd, someone kind of leans in. You know her? Yeah, you could say that. <sighs> Haven't seen her around here before. Yeah, yeah, she's new in town. Mm. Handle herself pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if you want to bet 10 gold <laughs> on, on, uh, on Doxley, I'll bet, I'll match you there. You're saying she's winning or losing? And that she will win, handily. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Fair enough. Oh, you, gotta, you gotta drive harder. For that. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, okay, so you've switched now. So you're player one, so you get to attack first. Mm -hmm. Also, Kate has. You see Ilian there, and you kind of peek over his shoulder to see what's happening. I'm gonna tap him on the shoulder and be like, sure. oh. "Should we place bets?" Uh, sure. I bet for Doxley. <laughs> oh damn! I was gonna bet for Doxley too. Uh, well. <laughs> across my arm. Oh, what, what, what are you gonna do? You know. <laughs> and Morna kind of in her bath, you just hear like a little bit of like shouting outside and stuff. It doesn't seem to alarm you, but it's just it's some noise. And you heard like a number of footsteps Slowly kind of. turning pruney and just like, <laughs> I don't want to have to go out there. <laughs> go ahead, TC, what do you got? <sighs> All right, can I try? Mm -hmm. Try? Getting up from the, I'll, she'll take yeah, my I hand, with, but, but I've got a little bit of mud on the other hand. And when I go, when I go to do this first attack, I want to try to like fling a little bit of the mud like in her eye. Okay, I need you I to go. give me a sleight of hand check. Okay. Very TC. And uh, can you give me a also, Ilian, Kate, oh, yeah. and Doxley? Can you all give me perception check? <laughs> sleight of hand, you said. What do you want me to do? Okay. Perception. Oh, perception. Yeah, everybody, perception checks. Sixteen. <laughs> 20, 22. 15. 15. 15. Okay, I'm gonna say that as TC's fist comes up, a little bit of that mud kind of slings into your face and it's gonna distract you on this attack. However, you are unable to see, but it could have been construed as an accident because he fell down into the mud. He sort of plopped mm -hmm. down into the mud there and picked himself up. But Ilian and Kate both saw TC kind of grab a little fist of mud and swing it at the same time. So it did not look like an accident for the two of you guys there. <laughs> all right, all right. So the attacks, right, yeah, the attacks were head jab and head heavy. Uh, footwork, negate all non-jabs. Okay, right. so the, jab the, the jab lands. I'm gonna say that because of the mud, a little bit of the heavy lands, but okay. not all of it. What's the total power of heavy? It's eight. I'm gonna say two of it lands. Right. So you clip her ever so slightly on the way by, even with Doxley's footwork, a little bit of that mud still in your eyes, so you're wiping it away and just then graze her. You just get smacked on the temple, just a little bit on the way by. So you okay. take four and I take two. Yeah. Okay. And at this point, Doxley rubs the mud out of her eye, sort of shakes it free. And what do you come back with? All right, Doxley's coming in for a body strike, head strike. Duck and weave. Fuck yes! Oh, yes! For the first yes. time, TC evades both attacks, yes. feeling himself nice. getting his feet under him. Doxley's still mud. trying to take that mud out of her eyes, you fucking asshole! Go ahead, Keep go sharp. I say to Kate, that would have been impressive if he didn't throw the mud at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a cheater, isn't he? Oh god. Okay. Okay. Can I see the shovel? Yeah, he like stuck it into the ground. Does it still have the it. label on it? <laughs> Does it? Uh, no. <laughs> oh. I think he left that back at yeah. his gold. It also didn't have his name on it. Just said shovel reserve. Yeah. Just a shovel. Um. 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 
right over there? Yup, yup, yep. everything's great. You sure? Yup. Wow. Um. Oh, yo, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Come on, Doxley. Yep, I got it. Come all right, right. Go for it. here we go. What are you go. throwing, TC? Head heavy times two. Head protect. Yeah! Oh, fuck you! Oh! TC goes for the double haymaker oh to the head, God. and both times, Doxley throws up one hand, poof, absorbs the blow, other side. Poof, yeah. Poof, oh, all right, dog. <laughs> it's all part of the game. It's all one game. One game. Here what it comes. do you come back with? All right. Feeling good. Doxley goes for head heavy, body heavy. Body protect. Okay. okay. The head heavy oh, hits. Shit. Yeah, and that's eight. That's eight for the head. <laughs> oh, TC man. scene stars a little bit. Blink oh, a couple times. Four, wow. and then I t I'm sorry, I took four from my punches and how much from yours? Eight. Uh, which which one did you negate? I'm sorry. She he negated the body. 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 So, so you eight. took eight. Yeah. Jesus. Just the head heavy. Christ. You haven't even gone down yet, have you? He has not. She has. <laughs> I'm gonna lean to Ilian and be like, Doxley would have really held her own at a monk training. <laughs> oh, you think so? Oh yeah. Oh. Multi glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pick themselves up, dust themselves off. Another flurry of blows. Get in there, baby boy. I'm getting, Back I'm on, getting. Baby boy. I'm getting. Little baby boy. All right, all right, all right. This is the, this is the big move. Big move of TC. <laughs> Oh, it's head ringing. TC's like, <laughs> shakes it off. And because some of these have been like, you know, you guys have, were out and about during the day, every hit that lands, there's like a spatter of mud or sort of dirt sort of flying off of you just from the filthy clothes that you're wearing. And TC, who fell on his back, when he gets up, he's like all down his back is just like one sheet of mud. What do you come in with? Come to the bath. Head strike times to two. General defense. Okay, you get to negate one. I get one. both? No, she gets to negate one, because they're not heavy. Yeah, non-heavies. Right? Yeah. One of them negated. She so gets to pick a non-heavy to negate. A non-heavy to yeah. negate, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well you take five. Great, take five. I am down. Yes! Right. Oh my, thank All right. <laughs> uh, she can negate the first one, which there means you still take the fatigue from both of them. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because you got to pick which <laughs> yeah, yeah, one yeah. to negate. I'll take the second. Yeah. yeah. So she, right. she takes the hit yeah. of the second one. So you so still I, take the fatigue. I still take two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Finally, <laughs> Doxley gets knocked to the mud, and there's kind of a oh, wait, just some shouting from the crowd. <laughs> Doxley <laughs> and he's able to give a little turn, oh and like a, a bow there, and uh, uh, Ilian and hat. Kate kind of looking around the crowd after Doxley gets knocked down, and you see. Maeve turns and walks away <laughs> after kind of watching a little bit of the fight go down. Mm. Okay. Again, with the biggest grin, Doxley's gonna spit out some blood, get back up. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, before you get up, I'll also put out a hand, like you, just like you did. And I'll, oh. <laughs> and yeah. you... She'll take your handkerchief and she's gonna go into her shirt and like wipe up <gasps> her boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Not the boobs <laughs> one! <laughs> TC will then take a quick... <laughs> TC looks around as he does that and there's some like... <laughs> Kate is gonna vomit a little bit in her mouth and then swallow the vomit back down. Wow. <laughs> Oh, before you begin, uh, give me your uh, composure roll. So uh, roll the uh, yes, and remember not with advantage this time. Right. Uh, so okay. same thing. Fifteen plus so seven. Gonna get that yeti juice. Come on. <sighs> oh baby. Oh Jesus. Oh. Okay. And we swap <laughs> once more, meaning that now Doxley is first to throw, okay. throw punches once. Okay. 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 All right, Doc. You gave him a round. Knock him on his ass. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Oh God. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh. Okay. 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 All right. Uh. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> um. TC's like guards his groin. No head. No groin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hurry you up yep, a little. Yep, 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 oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. All right, Doxley, you're throwing first. Okay, 
All right, so I'm gonna go body jab, body strike. Stay nice and low. Duck and weave, they both They hit. both oh. How much is this? Huh? How much was it? This is gonna be five total damage. And I, okay, this costs one to play. Uh, the defense fatigue happens after the strikes. Okay. So he's not down. Yep. Okay. Because you can't you can't tire yourself into getting knocked down. Okay. So the fatigue happens after the landing of the blow. Okay. <laughs> A couple more brutal body right. blows there from uh, from Doxley. All right, go ahead. Doxley's seeing your eyes <laughs> just slightly unfocus a little bit. She can taste. <laughs> Head jab, body jab. Counter. Okay. Ooh, both okay. Oh. Three. Couple okay. quick pop. TC goes for speed instead of strength this time, just trying to whittle his opponent down. <laughs> A couple quick strikes. Feels his feet a little bit. You it also, in addition to just the damage, you get a little confidence back there after landing a couple <gasps> blows that don't get blocked, circle each other again. <clears throat> okay. 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 Ooh, Ooh, baby. Okay. 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Shenanigans. Right, throw them. All right, she's gonna give you a nice little jab on the body and then really reel up and heavy body. Body jab, body heavy. Head protect. Oh! oh. And winding up, she does it, she uses a jab to gauge the distance and then brings the other hand in. Yeah. And TC can feel like a little bit of his lunch coming back up as he collapses onto his knees and then into the dirt there, and there's a rousing. Yeah! Right. Good fight, good fight. <laughs> Kate, will you see to my sister? I'm gonna head to TC. And the guy who's kind of on his wagon there, so, well fought, well fought. Now get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> People start to clear as he starts to ride through. Okay, Kate's gonna walk over to. <laughs> I'm gonna to go to Dox. TC. You may indeed. <laughs> I'm gonna offer TC a hand. <laughs> Aside from the mud, that was a great fight. <laughs> TC take it takes a, an extra couple seconds just staring at his hand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if only I'd been a goblin, maybe I would have been unscathed. Well, you can always pray for your next life. I think I'll go wash off. Thank right. you. Of course, TC. Guess what, TC? You'll never hear about it from me again. Good fight. <laughs> you lift up your hat and then you look at it and like it's scrunched there at the top there that got kind of yeah, pop it back out. Kate is gonna dap Doxley up and just be like, that was freaking awesome! <laughs> Party congratulations. You know the Merc Hall? Yeah. You been over there yet? No, not yet. Why? Turns out my friend runs it. And I've got some jobs. If y'all are interested, maybe tomorrow morning? No, like, uh... I need two people. Oh. About an hour and a half out of town. Oh, I yeah. know y'all are going to dinner tonight, so I was thinking maybe tomorrow. Oh, you're thinking me and Elle? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'll ask if he's... I've got nothing. All right. We'll talk about it later. What's her name? My friend? Yeah. Daphne. Daphne. Sure, yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks. By the way, I don't know if you saw that mud that uh, he picked up and then flung in your eyes. It was no accident. If I was facing me, I'd try to cheese as well. <laughs> I love her. Nice. I love her. <laughs> as all of this has gone on, again, we're gonna kind of rewind ever so slightly here to visit Morna, who's doing her best to relax despite the, <laughs> the kerfuffle in the thoroughfare. As you're just sort of lying there, and this is before even you start to hear some of the noises outside. Fine. <laughs> you're lying there and just doing your absolute best once again to both literally and figuratively sort of let the day wash off of you. As you sit there at one point, you hear the door open, which doesn't seem sort of suspicious in any way. Sort of wait and listen for a moment. And you hear boom, 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 
some heavy footsteps again, and you see kind of a large shadow. He doesn't come all the way past the privacy screen, but a large shadow kind of reaches the wall. More hot water. Uh, no, thank you. Hmm. <laughs> a little bit of more, a little bit more time passes. Door opens once more. A little bit of the noise from the kitchen kind of leaks its way in. Ah. And then when the door closes again, muffled. This time you hear some footsteps and they're not quite as heavy. Seems like a different person. You hear kind of a maybe some kind of sort of a boot or a heavy shoe on the floorboards. And you hear those footsteps stop. And then the sound of like a belt jingling. You hear someone kind of pick up a towel. A couple more moments and then... Sounds like someone sliding into one of the other basins. You hear the water kind of splash and settle a little bit. It sounds like it's on your side of the room, but maybe basin number one as opposed to three. So there's still like a basin... You're judging, sort of guessing based on the distance that that person was closest to the door and you're farthest away from it. Did it sound like armor came off? Uh, it did, yeah. It sounded like there was like a buckle, like a and then like a mm. Maybe just a light piece of, like just a chest plate or something simple. It didn't sound like a full set of armor or anything. Little time passes and you can hear some like just the sound of water moving around as a washcloth is applied. And then you hear another sound that sounds very familiar because you just kind of did it yourself, which is like a... And it sounds like someone goes underneath the water. You can hear kind of a little as bubbles reach the surface. Just wait, you listen. You open an eye at one point and you realize you haven't heard the sound of them resurface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait a little bit longer. Some bubbles, maybe. But no resurfacing. You try to sort of gauge to yourself. You don't have anything to sort of mark the passage of time. Mm -hmm. But it starts to feel like a very long time. Is it a seal? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't able to see the person. Yeah. You haven't seen them at all. You've heard some footsteps. Fingers crossed. <laughs> But yeah. yes. I mean, that's the, the first thought that jumps to your head is maybe someone who can breathe underwater, but mm -hmm. a lot of time goes by. Uh, for a while, you're like, has it been a while? Is it just in my head? And then enough time passes that they've been in there for a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeesh. You doing okay over there? <laughs> Morna is, <laughs> water has cooled off. She yeah. is aware that it is, maybe she has spent an, enough time <laughs> trying to wash everything off. The small bit of passage of time that you gave, you pruned fingers yeah. on all hands. So she's gonna get out of the tub and put on her two towels <laughs> and make a little more noise. Do sure. I hear anything? Uh, Ilian. <laughs> Doxley. Mr. Clemens. Okay, she's gonna go out and not trying to be rude, but like sort of <laughs> like <laughs> give a little <laughs> tap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's like, I'm not trying to creep in here, but mm -hmm. like give a little tap because it is a long time to be underwater. Yep. And she's. Like, they could be a CL4, they could be dead. Um. <laughs> you, so you go over to kind of, you're still on the other side of the privacy screen, but yeah. you like give it a little. Oh my God. <laughs> Can I peek in without being creepy? <laughs> give me a stealth check. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, 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 that doesn't really, does it count? Well, I you, guess well, it does yeah. kind of count. Now that you've looked at it. <laughs> um, an eight. An eight? I mean, 
<laughs> you do your best to be as quiet. That is at the top of the privacy screen. There's like lattices, like crisscrossing, like a lattice pattern. So you just try and like you put your feet on one of like the stools, oh and you just try God. and peek your feet or your your eyes up <laughs> over the top. Feet. Peek your feet. <laughs> over, your eyes up over the top. As you just sort of look delicately past the privacy screen, Delicate. you see four limbs draped over the edges of the basin. Their body and head are below the water so that their proportions are kind of being warped by the little bit of lamp light that's in this room. So the limbs are just out and then below the surface of the water, someone in the basin. Lying there with his eyes closed looks like a young human man. The scruffy beginnings of a beard his blonde hair floating slowly and kind of aimlessly toward the surface. It looks almost like bleach seaweed. And his left hand, which you can clearly see as it rests palm up on the side of the tub, has only four fingers on it. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God. My God. Oh my God. Um, oh my God. <laughs> it, it's, it's Haskell? Can Looks I tell? Like And Morgan's in his fucking towel. Um. She's gonna go down. He did, did, do I think he saw me? You you know that you made some sound like climbing up onto the stool, but again, he didn't. Res no response has happened to you shouting, so it's difficult to tell if he can hear anything underneath the tub. I mean, you imagine it's difficult to see. From, yeah. From in the okay, water. she's gonna. Um, oh my God, she's she's like she she wants to go and just grab her weapons, but she is like, I can't kill him in the fucking Paramount washroom, so um, she's gonna go and um, put on her armor kind of thing. You rush, rush back over to your yeah. sort of base in there. <sighs> and then, yeah, putting on the damp clothes is pretty bad, but she's not really focused on anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. She's suddenly fucking wide awake. Um, She's gonna wait there. She's gonna wait there and see if he, if he leaves and she can follow him. So she's gonna be fully dressed, standing behind her oh God. thing, weapons in hand, and she's going to. She's like vibrating, and she's going to just wait and see what he does, so she can try to follow him weapons in hand, and your back is to the privacy screen, just sort of listening out to the side. A minute goes by. Five minutes go by. You he hasn't, like maybe he hasn't submerged? He hasn't come back out? Okay. No. Okay, then I'm, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna um, open the privacy screen on the first. Yeah, there's no open. It's like, they, there are these, I'm it's gonna, like a zigzag fold. Okay, so you can great. just like push it just to the side. Just gonna push it over. I'm going to, with the broad side oh, of Bill, no. not the pointy side, I'm gonna whack um, his right hand. You give it a whack and it makes kind of a wet kind of smack as the weapon connects and the limb kind of Oh, oh no! I'm going to drop my weapons and I'm gonna pull the body out. You pull him out, you have him by the shoulders there and as he comes free from the water, all of the water pushes past his face, drips down to the tub, the splashing spills water out onto the floor and the weight in your hands immediately feels like the, the, he's giving nothing back. Like it's a limp body in your hands here that you pull in, you have him kind of one hand around his back, one by the shoulders, and his wet blonde hair is sort of covering partial part of his face, spilling down the side. You don't get to fucking do this to me! Is he, I'm gonna shake him. The limp limbs kind of. Um, oh my God, I'm, I'm is it, can I, I'm gonna give him a, my healing potion. <gasps> you go to your belt, you take out a healing potion, and you're gonna pour it in his mouth? Yeah. Some of it dribbles down the sides of his mouth and down his chin. And he 
doesn't come to. Oh, oh my god. My what? god. No! Give me a roll for your rage. Oh my god. What? It's an 11. Does it pass? Yes. Okay. Just feeling that rage coursing through, you grab your head, sort of scream no, and a, a couple moments go by as you're just sort of torturing yourself, trying to figure out what to do next, and finally the door swings open behind you and Bassett Clemens comes in and you can see like a look of sort of astonishment on his face. He comes over, is something wrong, is something wrong? And he comes over and, he, and you open your eyes, you look down and there's a wet towel like floating in the top of this basin here. What? And the water in the basin is like water, but mixed with some red from the healing potion that you sort of poured over the towel there. And Basil Clemens, is something wrong? Is it, was there a problem? Sorry, no. Um. Oh my God. <laughs> is there something I can get you? Oh uh, no, uh, I'm sorry. I no, I'm. <sighs> sorry. It, it's it's quite all right. Uh, we we'll make sure that uh, this towel. Uh, no, doesn't... no, it's. <laughs> uh, forgive me. I have. It has been a long day of traveling and I have bouts of fancy and I am, um, please pay me no mind. Oh. Mr. Clemens, I'm so sorry. Uh, no, please. Uh, I'm sorry if uh, the accommodations were not to your liking. Not, no, not at all. <laughs> and it's about at this time <laughs> that you start to hear some like, oh. from the outside, some sort of, it seems there's something going on outside. Are please, you quite all right? Yes, please. I'm so sorry. Well, uh, let me know if you need anything, and, and we'll have anything brought to your room that you need. I will. Um, I hope you don't find me uh, inconsiderate, but please try not to scream. Yes. Uh, the, the patrons in the kitchen thought there, there was... Uh, I don't know what they thought. Yes. It won't happen again. I appreciate that. And he, he, he sort of lingers at the door for a moment and he looks like he's starting to close it and then he just leaves it open a little bit and then he disappears outside and you can hear a little bit of more of the noise. It sounds like there's kind of a, a, a row in the, in the thoroughfare. What have I done? That you would abandon me. More it takes a moment to compose. He's just gonna, so. yeah, try yeah. to. Uh. You stay in there what feels like for a very long time, but it might be more like you know, five to 10 minutes. And that's about when the fight kind of cools down. You hear some footsteps in the, the lobby of the of Paramount, sort of a group seems to be coming back into the building. The rest of you as well, returning inside. Did you not in my, inside? No, in oh. my muddy state, I was thinking about possibly having a bath. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you get in and uh, Clemens is behind the counter. Is there a, a problem? I noticed a scuffle, however, it seems that things have cooled off somewhat. No problems here. Just a schoolyard tussle between friends. I am glad to hear it, and I uh, w would remind my guests of the uh, no violence policy inside the Paramount. Wouldn't think of going past that policy. I appreciate that. Uh, somewhere to uh, clean myself off. Of course, uh, underneath the staircase, there's a door that goes into the wash, and he sort of stops mid-sentence. We're actually having the washrooms cleaned at the moment. Could you uh, wait 10 to 15 minutes? Bringing in new water for the basins. I suppose. Have someone come up to my room, if you please. I will, I appreciate you waiting. Would you mind having company with your bath? Not in the tub itself, just... I was also thinking for, Near, to, for Niall, who should yeah, also get all yeah. nice and not muddy. Yeah. There are six baths. We just need to replace the waters. Great. We'll see you in a few. If you don't see us, give us a little rap on the door, and we can join you. 
take my shoulder. My sh- <laughs> I've got the shovel there. Yeah. Does it no. seem like he lied at all? Give me an insight. Okay. <laughs> Bad. Seven. Seven. I mean, it seemed like he stopped himself quickly enough that he sold the idea that like, oh, I forgot it's being cleaned. It sells it pretty well. I mean, okay. it doesn't strike you as dishonest. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I will ready myself upstairs, I suppose. I will have Kenzo give you a knock when the uh, basins are ready. Um, Thanks. Yeah, as we head up, I just want to say, you know, when I saw you, I heard there was a fight going on. I was pretty sure it was you. I've been then seeing who you were fighting. I thought it'd be fun. Haven't seen you fight Pike many, many times. I wasn't worried about you. I was happy to see you letting out some stress. It was reminding me of old times. But I never once thought is a cleric gonna come and fuck me up after doing this? Yeah. I fucking love this place. <laughs> fucking love it. Maybe we can start a tournament. See who can beat you. I don't know if that'll. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, well. We have to we'll find a, a venue? Yeah. Were people making bets? Uh, n- I tried, <laughs> but no one wanted to bet against you, and I wasn't not gonna bet for you, because I knew how to fight for you. So, uh,. There was a possibility of betting, perhaps. Let's do it. All right. Before they head up to their room, mm-hmm. I'm gonna like, like stop Ilian and be like, "Hey, hey." I mentioned this to um, Doxley, but I know y- y'all are going to dinner tonight. But uh, tomorrow morning, um, I have a job from the Merc Hall that happens to be double duty in getting some supplies for Maeve. And I asked if Doxley would like to come along. It's a two or three person job. Pays all right. Would you be interested? I mean, yeah, that's great. That means we're not taking jobs from one person too many times. We got Merc Hall, we got Bison, we got Monteros. We're really not selling ourselves as one group. It's and great. hopefully a good opportunity for us all to um, present a good face to Maeve. Be, be helpful. Yeah, uh, I think that would be helpful to Maeve, so I'd be happy to help. All right, um, I'll, I'll meet you guys at uh, uh, sunrise tomorrow morning. Sure. sure. Yeah, okay. have some breakfast first. Get some breakfast. Yeah. All right. Give me an insight check. <laughs> Is he being weird? <laughs> <laughs> me? What? 18. 18. You, nothing definitive, but when you mention Maeve, you just get the impression that you don't know when, but he m- seems to have speaking, spoken to her <laughs> since you were last there. He, he just doesn't, so he tries to kind of brush it off. But uh, again, no details. But <laughs> oh, yeah, Maeve, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You, you and Maeve are, things are fine. Things are like the, the same way they were the last time. I hope things were never n- not not fine. If well, they were like me. like like neutral to negative. I would say from our first encounter with her. Just, I guess uh, we're fine. Yeah. Okay. See you tomorrow morning. Yeah. I mean, if you have any questions, stew on it, and I'll answer them in the morning. I mean, I think we're fine. Maeve and I. I'm not trying to hide anything from me, but then they're asking. Feels a little bit like you're trying to hide something from me. I saw Maeve today and we said hello, had some business, and then I said goodbye. And it went well, you think? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Do you think she's like softening up to you? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't know if there's any softening up Maeve, <laughs> but uh, I mean, we just had some business to do and then the business was done. All right, well, hopefully we'll have some more business to do with her tomorrow. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe we will soften her up, slowly but surely, we'll see. Ugh. That okay. sounds weird. All right, I'm gonna go get ready for my bath. That's a real phrase, <laughs> that's weird. Is it? You have made a, it weird. Okay, yeah, great yeah, sure. Soften them up is a, is a thing people Okay, say. okay, cool. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Ignoring Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Have fun with your friend, or, or uncle, or... <laughs> Niall's not an uncle, but thank you. Yes, good friend, very good friend. Come on, Ilian. All right. She's going to take fire. Ilian also laughs because two other people, you guys look very similar, but like as sea elves, <laughs> Niall looks nothing <laughs> like yeah. you. Like not even close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like not a relation. <laughs> All right. All right. Can I set upstairs? Kate? you to go to my room. Great. Go to yeah. my room as well. <laughs> How long do you wait to sort of compose yourself? <sighs> She is, oh my god, it's, it's a bad day. Um, she's gonna, 
actually kind of as quickly as she kind of can, like pick up her stuff. She's gonna try to mop around the tub. <laughs> Where it splashed over the edge. With yeah. the stuff and put the towels. Is there like a, a basket? There is, there's a basket yeah, in the door. She's gonna put the used towels in the basket and um, sort of hat over her head, gonna um, go out and go to her room. <laughs> Morna sort of like a little sheepishly emerges yeah. from under the stairs and Bassett sort of sees you coming. Everything all right? Yes, thank you. I don't mean to pry. Uh, others were inquiring about the baths. Yes, uh, it's uh, cleaned up. May I ask uh, which one you used so as to replace the water? The third one. Third, left or right? On the left. Thanks. <sighs> um, she's gonna leave a silver on the desk. He sort of is in the middle of writing. For, thank you. I assure you, and he, not necessary. All the same. And she's gonna go upstairs to her room. Do I have clothes that are not my fine clothes that are yeah. I can change into? That you would have a simple change dry. of clothes. Yeah, they're they're not sort of your go-to clothes, so they're a little ill-fitting. You probably sort of grabbed them, sort mm -hmm. of whatever was available. Yeah, but, but yes. they're dry. Yeah, and you have. I'm gonna hang up my old clothes um, to in the room to see if they can kind of dry out, and then sure. I'll be able to scrape the mud off. Yeah. Um, There's you kind of the curtain rod over the window. You can kind of drape them over there, and on a day where it's sunny, some of the sun might kind of dry those out sort of better than. So that's what she's gonna do, and then she is, can't stay in her room by herself. She's gonna, as quickly as possible, change um, and walk. She's gonna go to Good as Gold. Okay. Morning, sort of quickly gathers herself and leaves. And as you are coming down the stairs, Bassett is actually coming up and he sort of, excuse me, you go by. And then a moment later, uh, sorry, do you, before, because it takes five, 10 minutes at least. Yeah, it took oh, about five, yeah. TC will have gone to his room and yep. done something similar to, mm -hmm. to switch out some clothes. And then uh, sit down at, there's like a little desk. There's there a very small thing. desk with a chair, yeah, and every room seems to have sort of the same general layout. TC just kind of like rolling his eyes and rubbing a few wounds and stuff, <laughs> puts his stuff down. And, gets the parchment out. At one point you touch your head and there's a little bit, like you're a little more hurt than you thought initially, so the adrenaline pumping, but it seems to be kind of a gash in your head. It's not like bleeding openly, but it's just a little. Fucking. Ugh. He sits down, gets the ink and quill, shores it up. <sighs> Writes deer. And maybe the knock startles him. Okay. Like, yeah. like, you, as the knock comes, you are surprised by yeah. how much time has passed. Like uh, that moment, and then you hear the knock, and you kind of snap to, and you look to the letter in your hand that says nothing but deer. It's it still deer. just says yeah. deer it on it. It's a deer. Like, sheet of paper. And you hear the. Yes, th thank you. Thank you. The bath's all ready. Um, any bath except the back left still needs to be changed, but the rest are yours. Oh, all right, all right. All right. You hear. Footsteps. Put puts all that stuff back away. In your belongings or the drawers of the desk? The desk. Drawers of the desk. Sure. Yeah. Gets ready, goes down. Um, do you I think you asked him to gather yeah. you guys to yeah. not do so? Oh. Yes. <laughs> hey. Hey. They didn't get they didn't ask the, go. Ask the fucking other guy. <laughs> He's busy. <clears throat> You pass their room on the way down because you're on the one floor. Up. Sirs and madams, uh, are we ready? Your a baths nice bath. await. <laughs> Thank you, TC. And I will head down with TC and Doxley. Mm -hmm. Doxley brought her chair back in from Pete. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that before I forgot. 
You guys head downstairs. Yeah. Once again, you go underneath the staircase and you find yourself in sort of this cozy little, there's a couple lamps lit on the wall that cast a little bit, of, sort of a strong shadow with the privacy screens that are there. When we get there, mm -hmm. do I see some red in tub number one or like anything like that? As you head inside, you see nothing of the sort. Okay. I mean, you don't know this, but it seems that it has, he very quickly got made that. sure that that got replaced. Well, this is cozy. Quiet, I, uh... TC goes over one of the baths and just like, see, tech checks the temperature. <laughs> it's lukewarm at the moment. Mm. It's fine. Doctor's uh, getting undressed. Yeah. Um, well, there's like, there's things, right? Mm -hmm. There's privacy screens. Getting between undressed all in the middle of the yeah, hallway sure, there? Why not? <laughs> mm. I go ask Clemens to get some hot water for me. Right. Yeah. I'll have Kenzo bring it right away. Thank you very much. Um, I want to be in the one next to TC if possible. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Well, TC, there's a thing. There's shades in between. Yes. So we don't, yeah. So when you're look over, and when see you're someone, in the basin, you yeah. can't see the other. But the sound yeah. But you, yeah. Oh, you can easily hear people. There's no doors between. It's just those screens. Yeah. Well, TC, uh, I wouldn't take it too personal. Uh, Doc wins almost every fight I've ever seen or been in back home. But you threw some nasty punches. It was. It was impressed. A regular champion in her own right. I can tell. And I'm sure. And Dr. Lee, you can attest to this as well, but if you ever want a rematch, she will be good to go if you ever want that. Mm. Maybe give me a few days to really nurse these bruises. That's fair. I would never want to step into a ring of Doc, so uh, I don't know what that'd feel like. TC, I hope you know that this has only earned you brownie points with me, my friend. As I hoped it would. You didn't let me win, did you? No. <laughs> you believe it when he says that. Right. No, I did not. Good. I want you to hear a little like... <laughs> 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 I saw the bottle half empty there. I thought I could sneak one in on you there, but obviously not. <gasps> but I fancy myself a good learner, so better watch out next time. So you got dinner plans with Morna? <sighs> oh, fuck. What time is it? <laughs> I, I don't know. We gotta probably head over to Niles soon. Yeah, it's probably right? up. It's like four yeah. thirty-ish, like approaching. But... I suppose I might as well just out with it and ask: Have y'all heard anything more about that meeting that happened yesterday with all the the big wigs? Yeah, I will say before they answer as well. Kate, were you planning on bathing as well? <laughs> I wasn't. Okay, you don't have to. I just didn't know Aww. if you had it. No, but now I'm gonna miss the hot sauce. <laughs> but no, she wasn't gonna take it back. Okay. <laughs> Stinky girl. <laughs> yeah. She likes to be. She likes to be one with nature. I don't know. She's like a wood elf. With like. Girl. God. She just meditates the stink away. <laughs> oh yeah. Could this be a short rest if we're just if we're in here for an hour and just yakking? I mean, if you're in here for an hour, it's gonna be past five, so you guys can't stay here. I mean, you don't you don't have somewhere concrete like that necessarily. What time did we say? Five thirty. Because <laughs> you said an early dinner. That's right. That's right. I will say you did get the benefits of a short rest. I don't know if you yet. I did that. Great. Uh, no. I have the trauma of a short rest. <laughs> I, I have not heard anything uh, beyond what everyone else seems to know. Mm. I don't know about you, Doc. I don't mean to speak for you. No, no, I haven't heard anything. Mm. You know me, I don't like talking to people, so <laughs> yeah. that requires talking to people to get information. <laughs> uh, how about this? If either of you been down to the Merc Hall? Mm, no, the farthest down I've been is Maves a couple times. Mm. Uh, you, you know, you guys know Maeve. Ma Alchem yeah, Alchemist. I've met her, but yeah. she doesn't seem to, you don't, what? what do you? Nothing. Out with oh, it, dog. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, no, I haven't been. Are you trying to go down there? I think Kate was saying something about uh, she has a job there or she something. Said, she said she was friends with somebody down there. Mm. You looking for work? Candidly, I already did. But oh. I may have put my foot in my mouth already. I. Yeah. I'm looking. <laughs> Honestly, I might be looking for somebody to pass word along to them at the Merc Hall. What, like singing your graces? 
no, no, like if I come up with anything, I can have somebody else bring them info in my name. Oh, I see. So, okay, just wondering if you had ingratiated yourself and I could use you as envoy. I would get in with Kate, mm -hmm. if anyone. I don't think she's very happy with me after today. Yeah. She didn't take it out on me with her fists, so it probably goes deeper. Probably. Mm. DC, you're from Peron. I? What did you do there? Yeah. This and that. Because I'm surprised I've not heard your name if you did there <laughs> what you're doing here. It's a big city. Yeah, well, we Honestly. know a lot of people. Do you? Yeah. You didn't seem to come by the docks that often or else we definitely would have seen you. Is that not your part of town? What you dealt with? <laughs> <laughs> I've made my way down there. If it's, so, maybe a couple, like, a couple not, times. like, that wouldn't, your business would that's never not my really take you there. Yeah. Nope, in fact, that's very far from your okay. usual neighborhood. What is your neighborhood <laughs> then? <laughs> not particularly by, down by the docks, no, no, I... That's too bad, you should enjoy it sometime. The water's beautiful down there. Mm. You sit on the docks forever. <laughs> See all the little creatures? It's nice. Docks. Is, isn't that what they call you? Yeah, it's not a coincidence. Ah, of course. <laughs> Silly me. Well, uh, if you want to remain mysterious, that's fine with me. But uh, I l would like to get to know you better, and we'll have dinner soon, TC. Because mm. uh, I do want to get to know you better, everyone. Don't fill up too much tonight, I suppose. <laughs> well, you want to have an after dinner? No, no, I was just being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, a surprisingly <laughs> candid moment. <laughs> Maybe the first thing you believe that you come out of his mouth. <laughs> this is bad. Uh, uh, all right. All right. Yeah. It's warm. As warm water has loosened me up. Forgive me I, if I've been rude. No. We should have baths together more often. This has been a great conversation. <laughs> Well, let's take a moment to relax. We're gonna pivot uh, upstairs. Uh, Kate, what have you been up to and where are you at? Also changing my soaking wet clothes. You do indeed, you have a spare set of, you even have, unlike some other people who have kind of a, you know, rags that they throw on when they're regular clothes, you have a full second set of your kind of monastic wrappings that you have. So wrappings. you, yeah, so you, yeah. you even have like a, yeah, like basically like a second version of your pieces of clothing, so looks more or less the same. Yeah, um, once I'm in dry clothes, I think I'm gonna head to the, the, the weaponsmith? Is it the silversmith or the? The blacksmith. The blacksmith, yeah. the blacksmith, mm -hmm. yeah. It is a blacksmith indeed. Yeah. I, I'm gonna head in the direction of the blacksmith. Right. Do I think I know where that is. I think it got think pointed out. Yeah, I, would, I would also say, literally the first building when you come across the bridge into Brunkhollow, is. it's on your left and yeah. you would have seen it coming into town. There's a furnace outside, like you can clearly see that that's what it is. Um, I think I still have the chunks, the three chunks of ore in my backpack. You do. Yeah, so right. I'm gonna head over there. Great. The As you step outside, the maintenance of the roads and the walkways at this point is coming along quite nicely. The mm -hmm. largest puddles and the muddiest patches have been either kind of mm -hmm. raked over or filled in. And with more people trickling in after their shifts in the mines has ended, it's getting a little rowdier, a little more boisterous here with the establishments both inside and out. As you move through the street, you hear a bit of equine commotion originating from the west, kind of where you're thinking of heading. And your first instinct is to assume that it might be Izzy's couriers. But what you do is you turn to see that three carriages are coming over the bridge, rattling with luggage that sways gently up top. Even without the needed repairs, it doesn't seem like Mr. Mackland would have been able to make it out and back in this amount of time, so it must be another caravan oh, guide. Oh, new friends. The driver of the lead wagon is curiously enough a goblin. And <laughs> she has a look of irritation as she kind of scowls and waves people out of her way as she's bringing in the uh, the carriages here. And she moves the vehicles toward Bernard's boarding where you guys as also got off when you first got here. Just behind her in the cabin, so it's two wagons coming in. And 
just behind her in the first cabin, a man kind of leans with his elbow and sort of peeks out the window so he can kind of take in Brunkalo as he's arriving up over the bridge. He takes in the sights with a smile on his face, and despite the hours of travel, he looks quite invigorated. His clothes are unsullied, he has this kind of structured green jacket, a top hat, and a nice bolo tie with a golden clasp up by his sort of uh, neck there. As you see, as you get a better look at him, because you're basically heading toward each other until they pull off to Bernard's, you guys are sort of, you know, coming at the same angle toward each other. And not only does the man catch your attention, you recognize him. <gasps> A while back, he was a passenger of yours yes. when you were working. Mm -hmm. His name is Chase Langford. Yes, it is, Mr. And Langford. a while back, he had mentioned to you that once upon a time, or some sometime in the future, he planned on coming to Broncalo. Mm -hmm. So you see him kind of coming in. He doesn't sort of see you right away, but he sort of looks around, pulls his head back in as they pull into Bernard's boarding. And it seems like a, a number of the doors kind of open, and it looks like he goes over to Bernard, uh -huh. and Bernard has a brief exchange with him, and then Bernard points over to Paramount Lodging. Mm -hmm. So it seems like he maybe asked where he could stay or, or set up or something. So they seem to be having a cordial conversation there. Uh -huh. So would you like to continue to the blacksmith? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll head over. Okay. You yeah. Over. It's, I mean, it's like right there, right? It's yeah, it's the on area. the way. Yes, it's literally yeah. like you'll pass by him on the way. Okay, as so he's finishing up his conversation. Yeah, he yeah. sort of finishes his conversation and then he takes his jacket, he sort of pulls up the collar and... Smells real fresh, doesn't it? I'm sorry, my dear. Have we had occasion to meet before? <laughs> Mr. Langford, uh, Kate Morey. With sincere apologies, I don't believe I recognize you. <laughs> which should hopefully be met with no offense, given the volume of introductions I make on a weekly basis. No worries at all. Uh, we met once uh, while I was working. Uh, you were actually one of the first people to tell me about this place. I don't believe so, no. No worries. Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, perhaps so. Sorry. <laughs> it's been a long trip. Uh, perhaps when I've washed and rested, the racking of my brain will prove less futile than it does in this particular moment. Well, you had a, a safe and successful journey, I see? Yeah. Give me an inside check. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. god. Oh, Why am I, like, so scared right now? You, motherfucker. Yeah, I, oh no, bad. <laughs> you said insight. You know, Six. You get no kind of impression from him. It's a little confusing. Yeah. You're like immediately taken aback because when you met him before, you had a very kind of long, in-depth, cordial conversation. Yeah, like, I remembered his name. Yes, like, you did indeed. And I recognized him. Yes. And this all mm. feels like, a, you feel like, even though no one's looking at it, it's like embarrassing. Like you feel like a little flush, like it's awkward. Like yeah. a whole exchange a little bit. Mr. Dombrowski has directed me to Paramount Lodgings, where I believe I am to hang my hat for a time. If perhaps you wish to fill in the blanks of my feeble mind, perhaps an opportunity to do it there. Oh, well, you know, that's where I'm staying too, so I'll let you get settled and, and maybe we can catch up sometime. Sure, or meet for the first time. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, thank you, kind stranger. Lovely to make your acquaintance. All right. And he turns um, and he starts to pull some luggage from. Up is the uh, the goblin woman who was driving the cart? Yep. Is she still around? Yes, she is. It looks like she's talking to Bernard now. Like the two of them, she's she's sort of motioning in for some of the horses to come into his uh -huh. boarding stables there. Oh, I'm. Yeah, I might come over there and uh. Pardon me. Um, what? Just wanted to mention that uh, I I know a gentleman who was on this cart and he didn't seem to be. Uh, quite in his right mind, Mr. Langford, did he seem all right um, coming in? Anything weird with him? What's that to fucking you? <laughs> I just want to make sure he's all right. Get the fuck away from me. I'm just going to be like, okay, and walk away. <laughs> oh, for two, Kate. <laughs> That's what you get for trying to make friends in Bronk Hollow. Okay, I'm gonna look Continuing on to the blacksmith. Back to the blacksmith. To the smithy. Oh, so good. We're gonna pivot back over to Morna, yeah, who has had a little bit of time to herself in her room. Oh my god. Is there anything that you wish to sort of ready yourself for? Or? I'm gonna go to Good as Gold and try to just get Sorry, out of, I can't be alone with myself. Sure. Or 
Great. You work your way to yeah. good as gold. I believe this is the first time you've been yes, to good as gold. I've never been. I can't oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Oh my God. So as you arrive there, um, it's it's quite quiet here. It seems that um, at this point, at this hour, a lot of the traffic is headed towards the taverns and the casino and things. It's it's off hours time. So mm-hmm. uh, there's maybe one person milling about the shop, maybe picking up kind of a, a rake or something that's just sort of testing it a little bit. And as you enter in, hello, welcome to good as gold, hello. formerly Samson and Samson Imports. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, hello. Um, my name is Bailey. Hi. This is my brother, Dustin. Hello. Um, I'm Morna Ishti. Oh, nice to meet you, Miss Ishti. Um, I am uh, new in town and was looking to replenish some supplies of potions. Oh, of course. Uh, did you come in on the Mackland wagon? I did. Uh, do you know Mr. Welker? Oh, yes. He's been a customer several times already in the short time that he's been here. That does seem like him. Uh, yes. Uh, what kind of potions <laughs> can I find for you? Do you have any healing potions? So we do. We stock, it's a popular item, so we stock quite a few of them. Yes. Uh, how much will that put me back? 60 gold per potion. Slightly inflated because we do have to import them. Of course. Um... I will, I will take one, please. Very well, of course, yes. And, um... Would you like to charge it to the Welker account? <laughs> I'm kidding, there's no such uh, thing. <laughs> I would have. Very funny, sir. Um, uh, do you also have a potion of fire resistance? Uh, that's more of a specialty item that you would have to request that we bring in from outside. It's possible for us to get it, but we don't keep them stocked. Oh, that's all right. Um, I'll just have the one healing potion. Of course, yes. 60 gold. Uh, We mentioned to Mr. Welker, as I just did now, that we do have a catalog with specialty items that now that people are aware of that you have helped some of the people in town, you have the opportunity to request certain items. Oh, that is uh, very nice to hear. I was not aware our reputation had Travel. It moves pretty quickly, especially if you help people that we know of, Bison and the Monteros. Oh, I see. Um, Word travels fast in a small town. Sure. And um, uh, you you both work here. We do. Yes, we used to do. Uh, we used to do runs back and forth from the major cities. That's when we were Samson and Samson Imports. Uh-huh. But that would be confusing now if we kept that name because we don't do it. <laughs> Someone else does the run. Yes, we have uh, hirelings that now that we've made a big enough business, Jeff and Amelia. Oh. But we didn't want to call it Jeff and Amelia Imports. Because you are the Samson brothers who yes. are running the store. Yes. I get it. This seemed to be confusing to Mr. Welker, but you seem to have a handle on it. <laughs> I, I think it is a very strong business plan, yes. Um, thank you. I'm going to hand up the 60 gold. <laughs> and... Um, Take the potion and put it away, feeling really fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> and can I like kind of poke around? And see yeah, what else you can poke around in the shop. Here? We'll have that. Do they have anything like fun or weird? <laughs> what would be fun? It's a general store, especially like out on the floor. It's uh-huh. pretty basic. It's a lot of tools, a lot of uh, sort of kits and things like uh, any of those. Um, what are those sets called? Like. Artisan's tools, carpenter's tools, cartographer's, like an assortment of, but it's mostly functional okay. stuff. Okay. Like nothing that's like, ooh, what's this magical trinket? Cool. If okay. they had something like that, they probably wouldn't keep it out yeah, of the Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, then I'm gonna just uh, say um, thank you, lovely to meet you both. Of course, please come back anytime. Um, We're will... up until seven most days. Okay, thank you. Be well. Thank you. <laughs> While that was all happening, you guys were finishing up your bath. Were were you guys leaving early? Were you also were you trying to get in a, a short rest because you would have to stay longer than the two of them? Um, I'll stay longer. Okay. And uh, if I heard, if I start to hear them, kind of yeah, if it's been silent you know. for a little while, but we've been yeah. doing our own thing, and you hear someone's footstep kind of yeah. come out of the basin and wet footstep on the floor there. A dead end family business. Just. Gotcha. Didn't see anything for myself there and thought I'd make my way here. Understood. Does that sound true? Make an insight. No. I think it's Andrew. Question. 
Uh, 12. It does, as far as you can tell. All right, well, I can understand that. Um, <laughs> hopefully, as time passes, I can unfold the mysteries of TC and get to know each other better. But enjoy the rest of your bath. Thank you. Yeah. As we walk away, I just want to say, uh, you know, Kate mentioned uh, if you want ever trained as a monk that you'd be pretty good as a monk. Uh, you, that's kind of interesting. Sounds like a lot of work, honestly. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would peg you for the Can monks you know, drink? meditation. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> do they drink alcohol? I don't know. I asked Kate. I'm not a monk. Are they you say- have seen Kate take a drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Kate does. So you- oh, yeah. It only makes sense that, unless she's a special type of monk, that she got special permission to drink. Can monks, do they have to drink? I have Because I could get on that. Nah, it could be. Maybe it's like once a week at least you have to have a drink. I, I think we can ask Kate in the morning. All right. Yeah. If, if That's cool. Forgive me. If you guys are kind of shoving yeah. out as this is happening, uh, and uh, if you see Kate, tell her I'd like to talk to her. Please. Certainly. Will do. Pa- uh, pass a message along. <laughs> sure. Do <laughs> <laughs> you see, like, kind of sits up in the tub to say that, and here's that, and just. Oh. 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 hears the door open. Down. You're alone here. I'm already sad in the bath. Monologue. Sad as bath. Monologue. Bath monologue. Takes out his, his dock sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> and we pivot back to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Unless when I was feeling like a little bit bad for you. Oh, that was all, that's, that's bullshit. It's just, yeah. it's still very sad, very sad. <laughs> Duxley and Eileen, you find yourself back out in the lobby. Yeah. Well, to the chop house. Yeah, I was gonna put my nicer clothes on, but yeah. Do I have to? <laughs> you don't have to. Okay, Mine are just covered this. in mud. I was in a, I was in a brawl. Understand. I will wait in the lobby for you. I'm just gonna wear this. Hopefully, the chop house isn't too fancy. That's fine. Okay, I'll be here. Okay. Oh, the chop okay. house Please is change. like, excuse me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> You're <Please. filthy. laughs> uh, And This yeah. is the chop house. <laughs> sir, you know where you are. <laughs> Um, and then you go up and change yeah, quickly. Yeah, I'll just change. Right, waits, come back down. Great. Find him in the lock. Let's move it. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. All right. Chop house. Heading in the direction of the chop house, which is very close by. And as all, again, a lot of these things sort of overlapping and happening at the same time, um, we're gonna go to, so Morna is leaving Good as Gold, mm-hmm. and we're, where were you headed? I'm gonna head back to the Paramount and wait for TC. We never talked about where we were gonna go, so I'm just gonna wait in the lobby. This chop house is the place. It's like the dinner place. I mean, it's the it's the one place that's dedicated to yeah. food. You've heard that both Paramount, which you've seen, has a kitchen, and also the music box has a has food oh, as well. Oh yeah, and we know they're going to the chop house. I mean, you do, because you heard Nile. Yeah. I'm okay. gonna meet him in the lobby and yeah, I okay. got yeah. I'll say that I like went upstairs, and changed, and I would also try to meet in the lobby. Great, we're gonna go over to Kate, who's sort of walking a little slower through the thoroughfare as he tries to digest what kind of just happened there. You get to the northwesternmost end of town, and you see the telltale smoke and orange glow of a furnace, making the smiths an easy mark, the smithy sort of very easily identifiable from a distance. It has an outdoor patio with a sloped roof, erected to keep wares safe from any kind of inclement weather. And it also has a very kind of pleasant spot to maybe drink and listen to the babbling of the brook. This is a prime location. It's it's obvious that he sort of Mm -hmm. got here early and Mm -hmm. picked out a good spot. You see a half dozen or so empty whiskey bottles lying around, which sort of indicate that he might kind of, in his off hours, just sort of enjoy the fresh air and have a drink. Like those working in some of the other high demand fields, Crenshaw, who you've heard is the Smith here, Mm -hmm. you guys have heard that name, seems to have done pretty well here. The plot that he's on and the house behind him are both very spacious. And between the mining and the hunting and the fighting, you can't imagine that a smithy's gonna be sort of not in demand anytime soon. The man himself is pulling apart scrap metal out on that patio. You can see him kind of pulling it apart and he's sorting it into different piles, maybe based on what he might be able to salvage from those. 
You see his rosy cheeks and a scraggly beard with a kind of pot belly that makes a bulge in his leather apron. He has like a leather sort of maintenance apron on that has a bulge in it. And before you reach the edge of his property, you do see a number of people kind of tip their hats or wave as they pass by. It seems like he's a popular kind of jovial figure in the community. He's well known to people. He, he sort of tips his hat and motions to a lot of people as they kind of come by there. So he's sort of working away at the scrap metal there as you approach the edge of his property. Uh-huh. Uh, Mr. Crenshaw? Hmm. Flea bags always find their way to me. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to make your acquaintance. My name is Kate. Crenshaw. You in uh, working hours? Yeah, for another half hour or so. Oh, all right. Um. What's your flavor? Weapons? Big axes? Um, I, I, I guess weapons. Um, I have these uh, uh, chunks of mithril ore, um, and I'm just going to pull them out of my backpack, sure. all three of them. Yeah. Um. I can't do much with these myself. Um, not not a bad size. As far as weapons, um, I don't know if you can make any kind of graft for my weapon of choice out of these, or. What do you, you like to idea? use? Um, I'm gonna like put them all in one hand and then just <laughs> They're like. They're heavy to put in one hand. You can put them down or in your bag or something. Yeah. Biceps. Okay, I'll, <laughs> okay, I'll put, put them back yeah. in my bag um, and then just kind of like like uh, bring out my my rending talon. Sure. It's a nice piece of hardware there. Yeah, came with me from home. Mm think it could anything on the tips or anything like that? Mm, you can mithril plate those easy. All right, um, how much would that set me back? Or, or would you like to keep the rest or? Well, what you got there ain't enough to do what you want to do. Uh, mm. So uh, you provide that, plus the cost, labor, extra mithril, mm. set you back, mm, 350. Oh, any chance I could just sell these to you right now? Sure. How much would that go for? <laughs> Let me have a look. All right. He takes them and he kind of examines them a little bit in a similar way. You don't know this, but uh, TC was showing them to uh, to Maeve. Oh, I got a good deal. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to find out. Um, he, it seems to be, and again, you don't know this, but it seems to be a similar deal. Uh, let me. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Maeve's like, I'll give you 10 gold. <laughs> yeah. 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 She wouldn't read you. <laughs> um, she would read one. Going right in Brunk Hollow is about 100 gold per pound of meat. Now, there's probably about half a pound in each of these, so I'll give you 150. I mean, in your professional opinion, there's not much I could do with just these, huh? Well, it's probably enough to coat a couple pieces of ammunition, arrows, darts. Mm. Uh, you know what? You can have them. Of course. And again, you know, meat really ain't too hard to come by. You know, just Absolutely. find some yours. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right, I'll just give them to him. Uh, before I take these off your hand, um, uh, where'd you get these? Um, I was up in the mountains, um, with a, a lady. Downwheel, upwheel. Fuck. Was it? it was you were still in the downwheel. Down <laughs> you, you guys have not been in the upwheel. We haven't been in the upwheel. <laughs> you haven't uh, gone that far. Downwheel. Uh, I was on a um. A job with a, a, a lady named um, Ace. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, she said we could take stuff, and so we did. That's pretty much all I got. Ace said you could take stuff. She did. Hmm. I apologize if that crossed some kind of line here in town. I mean, I'm pretty new. No, no, no. It's all right. I just try not to... Uh... We get scavengers who try to go into Bison's mines oh. in the off hours, pick me thrill out. And I don't want to find out that later you were picking through his mine. Well, I certainly don't even know where Bison's mines are, so. Make a persuasion check. Right. Make it with advantage. He's in, you know. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> persuasion. Uh, 15. 15. All right. I'll take them off your hand. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> he hands over the 150. Anything else I can get you? Um. You know, I think that's all for now, but, um. It's lovely to make your acquaintance. And I'm sure I'll be back soon. <laughs> I like to know folk in this town. Yeah. A lot of people come by. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Saywall. Mm -hmm. Saywall. Yeah. Used to work a lot in uh, security, doing uh, lots of weapons work, so. Oh. Know my way around here. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Peripherum myself. Oh. Outskirts of Unesia. Is that where you got your training? Yeah. Had a, had a smoothie there. I guess business is booming here in town, huh? No better place. 
Nice. You got any assistants or anyone else running around? Just me at the moment. The man gets too big, maybe take on the apprentice. I don't like splitting my money. <laughs> <laughs> and you look past him like, his house is rather lavish. Like yeah. he has spent awesome. money. Like yeah. he's enjoying the luxury uh -huh. of being a very in-demand figure yeah. here in town. Like he has one of the nicer places that you've seen and that includes like some of the bigger players in yeah. town. So. Uh, you ever work it with a, a weapons of an explosive nature? Explosive? Yeah. No, nothing like that. Sounds like specialty work. Yeah. In your time, uh, has anyone ever mentioned uh, kind of uh, explosive substances or you ever experimented with that kind of stuff? Sort of thinks deeply. No. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Back home, my bread and butter was hammers. <laughs> hammers for working, hammers for fighting. I mean, blades are great. They got their purpose. <laughs> But there's something right about the feel of a hammer. <laughs> and there is nothing quite so versatile as a hammer. True enough, true enough. It's less care of the hammer because uh, no blade to maintain. And they'll knock an armored target right on their ass. <laughs> nothing like a good balanced hammer. Mm. Couldn't agree more. Right. I used to sell to the city watch, military types. Mm. Crenshaw's thumpers, they used to call them. <laughs> I always liked that. How much for your cheapest hammer? Comes. Basic hammer, uh, weapon or tool? Weapon. Yeah. Let me think. He looks up for a moment. <laughs> Just like a basic, like not. Uh, like a basic hammer for weaponry. Hammer. War hammer. War <laughs> yeah. Hammer. So much. Yeah. You can get yourself a light hammer, run you four or five gold, all the way up to you know, great hammers and uh, malls, run you more like 15, 20 gold. C could I grab one of those uh, those lighter hammers? Yeah, of course. I got plenty of those ready to go. Sort of goes over to a little rack there. He takes off <laughs> what is a light hammer. I don't have a lot of weapons. No, I love it. Two. Transaction. Go smooth. You give me me through. We got a business relationship. Three gold for the hammer. That is mighty fine of you, Mr. Crenshaw. Of course. If you ever looking for something with a little more oomph, you can find me. I absolutely will. Have a great rest of your work day. Crenshaw's thumpers. <laughs> Don't forget it. <laughs> now I got one of my own. No, oh, that's not a thumper. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. If you saw a thumper, you'd know a thumper. <laughs> 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 I hope I never see the receiving end of one of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Afternoon. I have a hammer in my backpack. <laughs> oh, man. You feel the weight of it. It seems very well crafted. He seems yeah. to know his trade, but yeah. it's it's not fancy. Like it's not adorned yeah. in any way, but it's a simple. But functional. I could throw it. Yes, you could absolutely throw it. Wow. <laughs> okay. Cool. Or <laughs> torture somebody with it. As we flip back around to the other side Mr. of town, Walker. as you guys are on your way to the chop house, Morna is coming back from Good as Gold. So you guys are crossing oh, okay. so right before you sort of reach the doors of. Uh, I wanted the to chop thank house. you earlier. Oh. Um, about I felt bad for not going to dinner with TC and you picked up the slack and said you'd go with him and I just feel better knowing that he has plans. So thanks for that. Not a, I'm looking forward to it. Well, uh, we're at, we're headed off to, to our dinner plans. Um, hope I don't see ya. Have a great night and a good dinner. Thank you, you as well. Give my best to Niall, I hope he has recovered. Thanks. Yeah, he'll bounce back. Hmm. Have a good night, Morna. Thanks, you too. So your pleasantries pass by each other. You guys start to head, again, right across the street there, just beyond where the open market is, at the thoroughfare's kind of main T-juncture there. You arrive at a building that you've walked by many times before, and with its floor-to-ceiling windows along the eastern face, you can clearly see into the interior, where a dining hall has attracted a very healthy crowd at this hour. The glass of the lanterns within this building must be slightly tinted because the whole place has like a reddish glow throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it's more than like, it's not just torchlight or lamplight, like it's clearly affected in some way. It doesn't seem magical. It just seems like the glass might be tinted. Yeah. The effect that it produces is a very kind of cozy haze blanketing the entire first floor. And it just makes you want to finish your meal and curl up and maybe mm. find a chair to nap in. And it seems like that concept has more than a few patrons taking advantage of it. You <laughs> see some people sort of, even some with drinks still in hand, <laughs> sort of uh. nodding off after they finish their meal. And the place is big enough to accommodate and not have to kick people out as they do so. 
A long, smooth stone surface runs along one wall, behind which several servers are doling out helpings of steamed vegetables, thick cuts of meat, and spoonfuls of heavily salted potatoes. Helping with this process, but also occasionally directing foot traffic in the room, is a rather elegant looking dwarf. He looks to be in charge, long reddish beard with streaks of gray, purple tunic that has silver buttons kind of moving down. I don't think you guys have heard the name of the guy who runs the chop house here. Mm -hmm. As you pass through the doors, you also notice that there seems to be a second floor of seating as well. So there's this first floor, There's a, in the back there's a little staircase that goes up, and then there's a balcony that runs all the way around. That's sort of a second floor available for seating. When you pass through the doors, you see someone lean over the railing, and you see the face of Niall. And he sort of, ah! and motions for you to come up the stairs. He leans over the railing and points sort of to the back where the staircase kind of goes up and around to the other side. You guys heading through? Yeah. Great. Start to move through. You get to the back staircase, you get all the way to the top. When you get upstairs, you get a better look at Niall, who has cleaned up considerably. His silver hair is slicked back, still wet from having washed, and his change of clothes is kind of a loose robe that sits very differently on his frame than the fitted leather armor that he had on before. On the table in front of him are three plates covered with metal lids to keep them warm. It seems that Niall has already ordered for you. And with great enthusiasm, he motions for you both to come in for a hug. Oh, oh Niall! Oh, big hug. Oh, uh, there we go. Finally, a respectable appearance from myself. And before we say anything further, takes the sort of lids and he pulls them up and you see three steaming bowls of kind of a chunky white chowder that's there. <laughs> that's no Slim Harbor tilapia, but Luther's shrimp and cod chowder is the best seafood that you'll find on this side of the cusp. Oh. It's good to be sharing a meal with you both again. Been yeah. too long. Sit, sit, sit. He motions. He sits on the opposite. So you two are next to each other, and he's on the opposite side there. It's uh, good to see you got your range of motion back. Oh, much better, much yeah. better. So, tell me, uh, easy stuff first. How's your mom and dad? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they're fine. They're fine. I mean, they're, you know, Marilyn Lacklin. Sure. I, don't, I doubt that they've changed much since you've left. <laughs> uh, it's the exact same. Yeah, how, are, how are things running down by the docks? Uh, smooth as ever. Uh, smooth as butter, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you remember Pike and Ondine? Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is Ondine dead yet? I uh, always thought she was one stiff breeze from blowing over. <laughs> Anxious no. type that she was. I mean, you'd know better than I, but uh, I spent most of my time with Addy, as you know. Uh, sure. But I see them around. Yeah. How's Addy doing? Uh, you know. She's teaching me, well, taught me, well, uh, about handling numbers, shipments, right. all those fun things. How's her math? Was always shit. Uh, <laughs> well, you could say that as a good thing or a bad thing with our family. Yeah. Uh, an honest cooking of the books, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but no, everyone, everyone's doing fine. Uh, probably just as you remember them. Yeah, literally nothing has changed, improved, or gotten worse. Uh, I suppose that's what inspired me to come out here to begin with. Cheers. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> what did your parents tell you? What do you already know? Uh, honestly, about, you mean just about Broncolo? Not uh, sure, or uh, they told you to meet me. Uh, yeah, they, they, you were our, our lookout to find. Um, huh? I mean, I was sent here by Marilyn Lachlan to, you know, check out Broncolo, ask what you think of Broncolo. If it's a good place for maybe a branch mm. of work, uh, that's all. That's all I know. <laughs> I have my thoughts on that. Sure. Yeah. Um, have you been spending your time? I wasn't lying when I was talking to your friends or whatever they are. I worked at the prison for a while, mm -hmm. which is fine. Maintained decent relationships there. And then started working as a scout, both sides. Sometimes for the prison, sometimes here in Broncolo. Being a free agent has its lucrative moments. A lot of it is um, heading out into the downwheeld and the upwheeld and making sure that certain spots are safe enough to mine or hunt or whatever, just to make sure that people don't get themselves into trouble that they can't handle. Now, my plan, which we'll get to after enjoying a nice bowl of chowder, yes. 
is to hopefully, and he sort of lowers his volume just ever so slightly, not anything, not trying to be like very furtive or anything, lowers the volume. I'm hoping that the plan is to collect a kind of uh, tax, let's call it, of the regulars here at Runk Hall. Hmm. And what they do is they pay into a sort of fund that we then use that money to scout and make sure that everyone's safe and protected. Now, of course, some people come to Brunk Hollow and <laughs> they flood, they fleed from fled, fleed, flawed. They fled from taxes back home. So some of these people probably not going to be so keen to be paying into it. But I figure we make sure that some of the more dangerous monsters creep a little bit closer to Brunk Hollow. Mm -hmm. That way we convince people that maybe it's a good idea to have people like us around. I mean, if they see it as less of a tax and more of a thing that they're paying for people's protection, uh, then suddenly they're the heroes. Safety. Yeah. Safety first. True. Cheers to that. Please, food first, food first. Yeah. And then we get to business. Yeah. So he, he takes a big spoon, he starts to kind of dig into the bowl that he has there, and you guys start yeah. to eat. As that's happening, we're gonna do a little sort of back and forth simultaneous. Mm -hmm. Morna returns to Paramount Lodgings, and we'll say, uh, unless you lingered for something, mm -hmm. we'll say you're sort of heading up the stairs, and you see Morna coming in through the door there. So, sorry, so did I get a, a yes. short rest out yeah, of this? you did. Okay. Um, I can you didn't use... need to stay too much longer. At this yeah. point, it's probably 5.20, yeah. 5.15, 5 5.20. And I can use one of my D8s, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm just gonna do that real quick. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> I use the correct die. Okay. Ding dong. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that song. <laughs> I that. Oh, great. Did you use the d6s on the first one or was that just the second yeah, one? Yeah, I rolled a one and a two on d6s. Oh, I had uh, 23 left, so wouldn't have done much. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on it. Rotate. <laughs> 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 He's having that, uh, what's that called? Uh, Le spirit d'escalier or whatever. What? It's what? a French term that means like escalator wit or staircase wit. Oh, wait, after oh. the fact? After the fact, you think yes. of a good insult to say to someone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not in the moment. I, I'm sure All I butchered the pronunciation. All of my conversations ever. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Mr. Welker. Oh. oh. <laughs> Wait, you Are said you? I was, did you say I came up in a towel? I, no, why would were, I do you that? You could be, or you could no, I was, totally be in a towel walking you through could, the lobby you, of the you could. <laughs> If anyone would, he would. You were, no, that no. is totally allowed. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, Did I get you? I've spilled forth. Um, no, I'm just kind of writing all my clothes. And, oh, you're God. so stupid. <sighs> Mona, Mona, good evening. I will wait for you if you need to. No, I'm I'm quite prepared. I uh I thought maybe we could go to the music box. That sounds lovely. Um Perhaps I'll just yes. pop up. I will wait. Yeah. As you're waiting in the lobby, he never says anything to you, but Clemens is still sort of at the desk oh. there. And he, he's not giving you dirty looks, but he keeps an eye on you. I mean he it obviously sort of yeah, threw him a little bit yeah, there, you I can see. Get it, <laughs> and a couple <laughs> couple times he just kinda oh, looks up and at one time you kinda catch him and you lock in him. Just sort gives of looks kind of away. Yeah. 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 So yeah, he's not. It doesn't seem feel invasive or anything. Yeah. He just feels like he's keeping an eye. <laughs> no, on totally. Uh, Morna <laughs> feels that and feels the shame of it, and just sort of, uh, you know, absentmindedly fiddles with uh, whatever the fuck she's got. You know, <laughs> her, her clothes in her bag. Anything yeah. you can do upstairs, or you just oh, change it coming. Uh, TC like gets upstairs and takes a look at the shovel that's leaning against the wall and. Mm. <sighs> Uh, does she have, you have your weapons on you still? I always have my weapons. Yeah, yeah. That's I'll, not uncommon. Unco okay. I mean, especially in a place where like, yeah, town's pretty safe, but like creatures sometimes, like yeah. people carry their weapons around. That's not weird. Again, especially not something that's like a big two-hand. Yes, exactly. Yeah, if it's a small, a blade or a big two-hand. <laughs> like, yeah, if it's like a blade or a hand crossbow, that would then not I'll, be weird. I'll suit up, you know, everything. Sure. Except for the shovel. Yeah. And come back downstairs. Sure. Shall we? Yes. You guys head outside, walk mm -hmm. through the thoroughfare, you're heading in the direction of the music box. A little, just a moment here on the way before you get there. I'm looking forward to actually getting to know you. You are a bit of a mystery, sir. A mystery? Everything here is a mystery to me. Hmm. Yes. 
seems so clear and simple, this place, and it is not. I don't know if I ever would have said that. <laughs> well, perhaps I was naive. Mm. I have been accused of worse. As they are moving, they, they cross across the thoroughfare to get from Paramount to the sort of other cluster of buildings where the music box is. And in the distance, you see them a ways down, like not like you, even if you shout it, they might not hear you. But you do see the figures of TZ and Morno, who you recognize from a, a, a sort of far distance. And you see them kind of move, they move out of your line of sight off to the right after moving through the thoroughfare. Mm-hmm. Where are you headed? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unrelated, where are you headed? <laughs> start following them. As wow. you get to that juncture that they turn off, they disappeared for a moment. Give me a perception check to see if you catch them. Okay, yeah. This will determine what I do next. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, eh, well, fuck it, I lost them. 18. 18, you do indeed right. see them start to approach Just the night off. a building. <laughs> A little light stalking. And to TC and Morna, you feel that by now you've at least poked your head into most of the popular public establishments in town. Mm-hmm. There aren't a ton that you haven't visited yet. But this is perhaps the last to check off the list. You feel a bit of sympathy for the Sampson brothers, who are more or less adjoined next door, because even from a distance, a chorus of drunken voices rings out from the music box. A multi-story tavern with adjoined stalls for horses so their patrons have more temptation to stay and less temptation to drink and ride. Aww. Each time that the front doors swing open, you catch a wave of revelry as you look in and you see a kind of cramped but cozy first floor. A roaring fireplace, tankards atop tables that seem to multiply with each passing second and a human man with a shaved head and a thick black beard that looks to be taking orders. His sleeves are rolled up and he has a green sash around his waist. He looks like he has a kind of tattoos, at least from his wrist up to his elbow. As you get closer to the door, you hear like a round of applause and then sort of a strum of a guitar. And it seems like another song is about to kind of start off. There's a brief kind of moment of quiet. And then it feels like there's another kind of getting ready. And as you're looking through, you can't quite make the figure out yet, but there's like a small raised stage in the back where someone's sitting on a stool and they've got a guitar and they start to sing. And we're gonna play the <gasps> song. Oh, oh, yes! This is a song that was written for Broncolo, <gasps> part of the Broncolo EP by, by Stephen Chikowski, who yes. you may remember, you may remember oh, as Sasha, Sasha Ilvigo. Ilvigo. Or Ilvigo. even more notably, what was his name in the Eagles? Oh, okay. yes. Wait, Spend and Alia, no, what were you? I that was Wilkie. Wilkie. Wilkie Spend. Spend, 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 spend in your spend gold as well. Spend, gold. spend in your gold. <laughs> So he's written a couple songs, and this is a one a popular song in Broncolo oh that as you're entering God. in, you hear it, and people are like, you know, singing along with it as well. So it, the whole place kind of roars with a sort of friendly intensity as you begin to come in here. Oh, just enjoy it. Say that magic's dead, but I'm inclined to disagree. For every night I see a transformation in front of me. When the sun is setting, clinkers are done clinking away their strife. I see the dark thing here, Broncalo, surely come to life. Drunk hollow, drunk hollow, <laughs> close the whiskey and the ale. Drunk hollow, drunk hollow, see the climbing all wine sails. Light there in the thoroughfare, lovers kissing sweet. <laughs> the magic of Drunk Hollow nightly sweeps me off my feet. Enemies in the upfields at each other's throats all day. But more of each a nasty drink in the trouble. See people tapping their feet, away. nodding along. Down drunk who's a nuisance during hours of the sun. Under influence of starshine is the party's chief of fun. Drunk Hollow, Drunk Hollow, the whiskey and the ales. Drunk Hollow, Drunk Hollow, see the climbing our wine sails. Fight there in the thoroughfare, or lovers kissing sweet. The magic of Drunk Hollow, and it sweeps me off my feet. Even Samson and Samson, who are never next gen. Come the wisps and whirls of nighttime are completely heaven sent. Prep and proper at their store, but when dusk are a little loose. Magic of Drunk Hollow makes them silly as a goose. Drunk Hollow, Drunk Hollow, close the whiskey and the ale. Drunk Hollow, Drunk Hollow, see the climbing on wine sails. Find there in the thoroughfare, or lovers kissing sweet. The magic of Drunk Hollow, that 
it sweeps me off my feet. If you cross into the cusp and think you're free of the arcane, on your first night here, I'd ask you all to kindly think again. When the moon is high and shiny as a silver in the sky, you see the spells of kinship through Drunk Hala start to fly. Drunk Hala, Drunk Hala, over the whiskey and the ale. Drunk Hala, Drunk Hala, see the climbing all my sails. Right there in the thoroughfare, our lovers kissing sweet. The magic of Drunk Hollow, and it sweeps me on my feet. Drunk Hollow, Drunk Hollow, both the whiskey and the ale. Drunk Hollow, Drunk Hollow, see that climbing all white sails. Right there in the thoroughfare, our lovers kissing sweet. The magic of Drunk Hollow, and it sweeps me on my feet. Woo! The place erupts into a round of applause, and as the laughter kind of dies down and maybe another song begins to play, Morna notices that her drunken friend is there, seated oh, in the bar at the music yes. box. Oh and that is where we are going to end oh, tonight. Oh, wow. Steven. Steven. That was so fun. That was uh, fucking swell. So the music box, rocking and lively here. You do see people with food as well. There's definitely a kitchen that's here in the music box. Now who gives a shit? But as everybody <laughs> makes their dinner arrangements and Kate by the window looks <laughs> inside. <Yeah. laughs> that is where we're going to pick it up. Oh. Not next week, unfortunately, but the oh. week. Oh, damn it. Oh, you know what? I'm so glad it wasn't a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Thrilled. Um, oh. Not a place for a quiet conversation, but we'll make our way. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it, get not a quiet conversation, but you people could, wouldn't hear you it, yeah. over good, the noise. It's a good spot. So it's a good spot I'm to have a, a private conversation. What do you think of the god? <laughs> the music stopped right at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is where we're going to pick up. Once again, uh, for the people oh, who so maybe good. weren't here at the beginning, uh, we are off next week for a Thanksgiving break, um, and then we'll pick it up the week after. <laughs> We had a hype um, train here at the end. Hype for Steven's music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hype, 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 hype. Uh, so special. That is not the only song, and hopefully we'll hear some more. Woo uh, yeah. that, that's, more the, that's the drunken banger there, Drunk oh, Hollow. Drunk, drunk Hollow. <laughs> um, phenomenal stream, everybody. We had a lot of great stuff in this episode. We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you join us a couple weeks from now. Please. Um, December 3rd. Can't believe we have to wait that long. I know. No. It feels terrible. I know. It's terrible. Um, if you're just finding us, uh, all of the first nine episodes are available on YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, I just threw a link into the Twitch chat for or the Discord, specifically the discussion part where we talk about like each episode. Like you don't have to worry about spoilers and stuff. You just go and you like throw all your hot goss and weird theories in there. <laughs> um, if you're on TikTok, I can't put a link in there, but it's just Discord.gg/tabletopnotch, and you can join and have some fun. Really yeah. join it. It's so fun. It's yeah. so cool. It's I love so that. Good, good discussion there for for sure. Um, anything yeah. else? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Friendsgiving. American Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Friendsgiving. Uh, we'll miss yeah. you. We will miss yeah. you guys yeah. a lot. Yes. Did you want to say thank you? Was yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, <coughs> just... Did you want to? You don't have to. I, guess, I would. She no. has to. to. And wants I to. I love it. <laughs> Let me see where I fucking left off. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, what was the last thing you, uh, I, don't I should know. get better at that. Uh -oh. I should get It's such a good day in town Sorry, not you, me. I'm just sitting here being like, that's a nice name. Okay. Here we go. I remember two word resources. Subscribe. Spike82 did 200 bits. Hopeful Optimus resubscribed. That random Twitch guy did 300 bits. Low Brass guy did 1,000 bits. Ali Slater did 100 bits. 911 LS resubscribed. Slick bag, uh, re what does that even mean? Slick bag. Reached three stream streak. Oh, what's Twitch Aww. doing? What's I'm a three stream streak? Sure I mean, they've been, like they watch been here three streams oh, in a row. Three in a row. Thank you. That's, Thank that's, you. that's cool. Hell that's yeah. awesome. That could be a thing. That's cool. cool. Streaking! Awesome. Okay. <laughs> like TC Alex did 100 bits. Like, like TC so, through the lobby of Paramount. Yeah. 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 Random Twitch guy to 400 bits. Alex Slater did 100 bits. Vex Salon yeah. did 100 bits. Pokedogo 10 bits. Spike uh, 82, 100 bits. Jay Browning 1,000 bits. Game on Clay 500 bits. That random Twitch guy 300 bits. And GF Powers 100 bits. All because of Steven. Thank you, Steven. Yes. Oh. Thank Yay. you, Steven. Cheers, Have a wonderful week. Cheers. Have a good week. We'll see you Cheers. two weeks from now. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, oh cheers. You got it. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.